I opened uh, yesterday's show with a guttural primal scream, and I will open today's with a guttural primal fart sound. That's how I feel after watching that game last night. Good morning, everybody. It's great to be here uh, with you all. It's not really. I was today was a rough one getting up in the morning. I'll just tell you that right now. But I, I'm here and I'm happy. I'm happy to see my friends, Paul Rindel, the executive producer. Good morning, Paulie. Good morning. Happy to see my friend Ben Higgins. Today is Golfer's Day, so I feel like it's a very special day for you. Uh, happy Golfer's Day to you. Thank you. And happy right. Wednesday. Day before the Masters seems appropriate that today would be Golfer's Day. Although, heard some bad news this morning. They're expecting a lot of rain tomorrow in Augusta. Every effing year, I feel like this happens. 50 mile an hour winds and rain. (laughs) Every year with this. Good chance that uh, at the at the very least, tee times will be delayed several hours. Every year, you're probably happy because I won't be distracted at all because there won't be any golf during our show. That's whatsoever. It's a good point. All right, hang on. Casual, not even really golf fan. Paul wasn't going to watch this much this weekend Mm -hmm. anyways. Why don't they just move it to like May? It's a great question. It's a gr- put stu- another tournament somewhere else tradition. this month, this Bro, weekend. Just move it up. Move this it up. Happen- I feel like this Every does happen. Every single year. The gnarliest like, weather we've ever look, seen in Augusta. Sunday, I'm sure it'll be gorgeous. Right. It'll look great on TV. But all you're that. jamming a hundred. It's just. Just e- move it up like every three year. weeks, four weeks. Every year. You know, I I mean, if you really, the if you want the, the answer yes. to that question, I mean, then you're moving the next major, the PGA Good. Championships in a couple of weeks. And Good. You have to move that earlier, so then it it hits the weather. Um, ultimately, I mean, they they get it in every single year, and and sometimes they have to work around some rain. Sometimes they don't. But Augusta National actually closes for the summer after the Masters. Yeah. They don't open again until September or so. So this is the last week of the year that Augusta National Golf Club is is open it's until crazy. the fall. It's it's not a course that it's too hot down it's, there. That, that's why they feel like you wait any longer, it gets miserably. Sticky, it's, hot it's, well, in Georgia. It's dry. So, I love. I don't know that it's dry. Their their summers are pretty pretty, pretty wet, and they get those summer storms. So I'm I bet they picked the calendar week that they felt like we're pretty. That's as good as it gets. Now some place, most places in the country aren't us. Well, that's as good you as just it gets. Have, Why does it always do this? Have every have every major in San Diego. You'd probably have the best luck with weather, but they do should like do that. that. It's a great they idea. They do like to have things should, in different places. Should do so. every All Star game here. Yeah. Should frankly should have done every Super Bowl here. You know, maybe we would have kept the team. Uh, well, what, listen, welcome in everybody. Uh, ben and Woods, ninety seven three, the fan. The the Masters is, does start tomorrow. I love some of the, and I'm you know only a few year golf fan now. Like I I'm still a fan. I don't play nearly as much as I used to. Not even nearly close. I don't practice anymore. Um, it's mostly because I can't play a lot. So I'm like, what am I practicing for something I can't play a lot for? It feels. Feels kind of counterproductive. You got baseball right now. Well, I got baseball and it's now. It's hard to do both at the same time because yeah. the one swing affects the other. You're not going to make my baseball swing or my golf swing any uglier, though. That's the thing. <laughs> they're both they're both putrid. Uh, one is more effective than the other. The baseball swing, as ugly as it is, has really been working uh, this season so far in very limited uh, abs. But you know, I just I I used to really like to practice golf with the intent of. Playing three or four times a week with with Bo in kindergarten now he gets out earlier. There's just no. I mean, we were playing two, three days a week sometimes. It was a lot of fun, but um, I just can't. The so as a, even a when I wasn't a huge golf fan, I was still into the Masters, and it's mostly because of the weird things that happen and have happened at Augusta National. We could talk about some of those today. My dad has a couple great stories. I've shared them before on the air about the new guy that uh, was accepted into Augusta, and they had to tell him to stop playing golf so much there. Like, it's a weird place with very weird rules where you walk in and you're not comfortable. Like, you just, I don't think you're ever truly comfortable as a member at Augusta National. There's some really cool stories. Uh, we can do that if we if we need something today to talk about. I don't know how much we can talk about. Uh, just another putrid roller coaster type loss for our San Diego Padres. We will talk about that today. My camera is at a very strange angle. I'm trying to get it figured out. If you guys uh, so are so inclined, you can watch us on YouTube. A lot of people have been enjoying the YouTube feed every day, so we certainly appreciate your support there. Shoot us a like. Give us a subscribe. Uh, if you would, trying to get our subscriber base up. I don't know for what other than just ego, probably. Like, we'd love to have a lot of subscribers. I think it's like Twitter. You know, you want as many followers as you can get. I don't know what that is in us innately, but, 
yeah, we want we want the biggest subscription base we can get. So give us a, a, a subscribe and a like on YouTube if you would. So you uh, you mentioned as I came in today. So you look you look tired. You, yeah, look, okay? you look tired. Yeah, and uh, I feel fine. I'm not tired. I did have an incident as I was driving into work this morning. Very minor, but it's definitely something that I sometimes worry about. Like myself, I'm not I'm not afraid to share my opinions, whether it be on sports or, or other things. I certainly, Mostly sports. I, I certainly will give you my two cents, but you know me. I don't love confrontation. I don't want to push back too much. You know, I respect other people's opinions as well, and I'll leave it at that. So if you watch on the YouTube stream, you probably notice most mornings I have an iced coffee, right? Yes. I stop by. It's convenient. I get it from Mickey D's on the app, 99 cents. It's very fast. It's iced coffee, no sugar. I get the same thing every single morning. So... I order it, pull in this morning like I always do, and there's usually the same guys working there, so you drive in enough, you know, we friendly, cordial, greet him. And I pull into the window, and I usually see him, like, filling it up, making it like he normally does. And I see him making it, and I see him pump the sugar into it. And I go, and he's handing it to me, and I go, it's, is that mine? I go, no, no sugar. And he goes, yeah, I know. I make your coffee, like, every single day. I know no sugar. Oh, no. And I go... Okay, I mean, how do you, when you say you see him pumping I, the so, sugar, in. so it's liquid sugar. Okay, so he, you know, if you order sugar, they'll put like two or three pumps in and then put the coffee in. So make I make a note to bring in. And a, I, I need a thing and of I liquid sugar. And I assume it was just here. like he's got just rote movements, like you know, you do a job enough, and like you out of a habit, you do something you don't even realize you're yeah, doing. Yeah, for it. sure, that wasn't intentional. It wasn't intentional. He wasn't doing anything to me, but I pushed back. I don't usually push back, but I push back. I go. You know, no, I, I mean, I saw you put the sugar oh, in. God, and he I'm goes, no. Are you, he says, I make your coffee every single oh. day. I know there's no sugar in it. And he just kind of hands it to me and he goes. And I take a sip. And, of course, yes, there's sugar in it. And it's not the end of the world. I I don't hate sugar. It's just not the way I order my coffee. And I just didn't know what to do. Do I, like, do I have to, like, walk back in and change? So I just wore it. And I do that sometimes. I'll just, I in the interest the of peace... I'll just wear it. It's not what I wanted, but I don't want to make a big deal out of it. You know, you guys know me pretty well. You'd be surprised at how much I wear it. Like, right? I want to picture myself as a Larry David type, and if you've watched Curb, you know, Larry David would have said, I, I, make me a new coffee. I, I'm not drinking that. I watched you put... <laughs> Yeah. What are you doing? Just put, put, sugar. put it in there. It's, it was very Larry <laughs> David-like. Like, how do you convince someone... Who's absolutely sure they're right? He's watch. You're wa I've watched. That you're you. wrong. I mean, I would have to have, like, take a sip of it, taste it, dude. I promise you, there's sugar in it. Like he's got. I he don't was, say it twice. He dude. was so sure because he does it every day. He doesn't put he doesn't put sugar in it. And I know it's not a big deal, but I just didn't know how to handle it. And I and I always do. That. And I just said, let's just let's just be the good guy here and just take it. And I'll just drink my coffee with some sugar in yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's actually. I don't know what it is, and and again, I'm a I I actually enjoy confrontations a lot. You do more than I do, but, that's for sure. But when it comes, like I like confrontations with Adam, right, <laughs> and my wife sometimes, and my kids. But when it comes to like a restaurant, I mean, we were just at a place, and I ordered something, I got something different, and I go, oh, well, I'm not sending it back. And Ben, luckily, you were nice enough to say, I'll eat it for you. That's and because you I don't want any confrontation. <laughs> you didn't want. I ate you... your I ate your dish just so we didn't have to deal with a confrontation. <laughs> because you didn't story. you didn't even want me. No, it wasn't you, even your your confrontations, confrontations are you much more awkward than mine. Around it. <laughs> I did not want to be around it. My wife is the same way, too. Like, so we're just in our house going, oh, we didn't want that, but it's okay. It's fine. I, we don't need it right now. Like, it's so bad. It's a it's a bad quality to have. You just we're like we're like doormats. The doormats of society. Ben and Woods. But I, I also think that if everyone was a little less confrontational Confrontation. and nicer about everything, we'd live in a better world. So I try to I try to, you know, set that example and be the guy who's not complaining about everything all the time and, you know, I can get along and but then it's like what do you what do you do? What do you do when that happens? Yeah, see Jordan makes a good point in the chat says as a diabetic, I get worried something like that will happen every time I order something sugar free. 100%. Yours was just you don't like the taste and you didn't really want the extra sugar and you like it your way. Um and the McDonald's, I thought it was 
your way. Isn't that their whole bit? Have it your way. Absolutely. <laughs> so instead of me having it my way, I'm going to have it your way today, <laughs> Mr. At the... Uh... I, I like... Welsh Friars stunned that it's 99 cents. He goes, it's like a pound 50 where he is. It's only that on the app. It's like $3 or something normally, but if you use the deal There's on the app... There's a discount to be found. Rest There's assured. a discount to be found. I will find it. And you can use that deal every single day. And I get my large iced coffee, oh, and it lasts Burger me King. throughout the show. And it's just it's it works for me for ninety nine cents. I go, I can't make it for cheaper at home. For we did coffee. this. Uh, we did this a couple years ago, probably. Doesn't Ben have like a hundred different food apps, apps yeah. on your so phone? So you can get every single every discount and deal possible. and point club, so I can you know <laughs> cash in on every possible reward. And you know, lower the average cost of everything just a little bit. You did. You look. Sh- you looked shook. When you walked, when you walked in, a disheveled, a little, just like I'm like, oh, are you tired? And he's like, no, I'm not tired. I didn't know about the, the. Um, I was just questioning just all my life's choices. <laughs> yeah, That's no, I, I, I hear you. I do that. I do that uh, a lot as well, man. I'm questioning a lot <laughs> these days. <laughs> Today on Ben and Woods, we dive deep into the mind and the very soft heart of Benjamin Higgins. Yes. Coffee with sugar. How is it? It's very sweet. A little too sweet. Little... Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. that's how I like um, it. Just a little syrupy sweet for me. I like uh, my coffee yeah. like Winston Wolf. Okay? Lots of cream, <laughs> lots of sugar. Not satisfied till the spoon is standing straight up in my coffee cup. <laughs> Hector, why don't you relax in the chat? He says more Padres talk. My brother, in Christ, Hector. Mm, he says deal. less giggly, giggly. Hector, we got three hours and 47 minutes. I'm going to jam so much Padres talk down your gullet that you're going to be so full, okay? So I'm going to need you to relax. Pace yourself a little and bit. And don't, don't piss me off right now, okay? I'm just telling you. I'm in no mood. I also watched that game. The Padres talk is coming. We have a plan on this show. It's worked for us. Zip it and relax. It's coming. I promise you. Okay, I'm in no mood today. I got two kids busting my balls at home about every the talk. This is what's getting to me. My kids are talking back to me, oh. and it's tough. And now Hector's talking back, <laughs> and now I just feel on the defensive all the time. All right, I'm gonna giggle every single day because it's the only thing that gets me through my 24 hours a day every day. If I didn't laugh, I wouldn't be me. We're gonna have fun. We're always going to have fun. If you don't like it, you don't have to listen. Like I tell my kids, if you don't like it, you don't have to eat, dog. You just, hey. You're choosing confrontation now. Well, well now you I'm didn't pissed. Ha- you didn't have to choose confrontation. I don't like back talk <laughs> from Hector, from Taylor, from Bo, from anybody. Okay? I'm in no mood for you're it. You're going to eat your Ben and Woods, you're and gonna you're going to like it. If you don't like it, you can go. Okay? Pack your. I told Bo last night. If you find a better place to live, you are more than welcome to go. <laughs> Pack your bags tonight and go. <laughs> he just looked at me. I'm like, where would I go? I'm like, that. Dude, that's up to you to decide. Okay, I'm over it. We got 3:45 left. I'm telling you, we are going to crush Padres talk for you. I am, and, and we're also going to laugh when we so get you know. to the Padres talk. In fact, when we come back, I'll tell you what else is real. Just really bothers me. We'll get to that. We'll set the menu. You know it won't bother you. And I don't know exactly when we're going to do it, but just pulled uh, the incorporator. Jesse oh. Agnew. Is it good? <laughs> it's fantastic. fantastic. That'll be Make fun. Make sure not to laugh That'll at it. That'll be fun. All right, we'll tell you when. going to crap his pants. We'll tell you when all of that's uh, on its way. Hand out the menus. Get going here. Padres talk. Less sugar in your coffee talk. Coming up next after a check of traffic. I mean, how be, dare you, Ben? The always sweet Kelly Danick. On San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
I will say Hector is wearing it like the champion that he is in the chat. Check Hector, I apologize. I'm on edge, man. <laughs> well, I know why you're on edge. It's not his fault. I know why you're on edge. It's my kid's fault. <laughs> no, it's the Padres' fault. It, it is. It's the Padres' fault. Welcome back. It's uh, Ben and Woods here on 97.3 The Fan. And I, I understand the nature of baseball. You're going to win 60, you're going to lose 60, and what happens in the other 40 games determines your season. So you can't... You can't get too excited or too down on any single day. Watch me. But it's impossible. <laughs> I, I guess if you knew here. Yeah, are you, yeah. First time. I, I, I know. But yesterday's show was so cool and so, so fun. fun yep. And and we all enjoyed it so much as Padres fans. An historic comeback. So great. But it kind of cheapens it a little bit when the next day you come out and you just lose five to one. It does. It I, I and I know that it, you know. One day does not impact the next in baseball. You have to go out and perform and execute every single day. And the Padres could win 15 nothing today and take the series. And that's that's a good result. You take two or three from the Cubs, solid result if they win the game today. And we'll 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 have that perspective tomorrow. But we spent four hours and we were so excited about it. But I knew in the back of my head yeah, we said it. that there was, you know, there's, there's no, that chance. There's a good chance. There's a very good chance. That we'll wake up the next morning feeling like we're feeling right now. And that it's frustrating because it feels like you almost wasted your time getting excited yesterday. Which you didn't. It was special. It was fun. It was exciting. It's why we watch baseball and why we enjoy it so much. We're supposed to have fun and enjoy days like that because they don't come that often. Yeah. So I'm glad we did. It just would have been a lot nicer if they could have followed it up with another win. I knew they were going to win every game the rest of the season. Sure. They're over two that. this season so far. We talked about it. Uh, it was a couple weeks ago. Remember, they beat the Giants and pulled it up here 13 to 4 yep. on a Sunday. And I said, All right, here's a test. Let's see how they do. Because we knew how this team would play the next game last year. Right. And they lost 6 to 2. Yep. And then yesterday or two days ago, they didn't like destroy the other opponent, the Cubs, you know. They scored nine runs, nine straight, yeah, but, but it was, was a one-run game. After being down eight, right. yeah. It wasn't like it was a 12 nothing win or a 13-1 win, but still, they put up nine runs. You know, let's see how they bounce back. Let's just play this game. All right, so in Korea, 2-15. Those were the two games. All right, then a week off, they come back. Opening day, 6-3, 6 13 2 2 3 2 4 2 9 one. I... I just up and down. There's there's not a lot of offensive For a consistency. run differential of? Minus three. It's like space. I'm doing this off the top of my head. It's like space pretty mountain. pretty sure it's minus man. three. Riding this this team, this team has got the space mountain vibes. And we, we spent some time off the air this morning talking about the the phenomenon known as momentum. Kevin AC addressed it in his newsletter. We will talk about that today. The fallacy, I guess, that is momentum. I feel like I've seen momentum exist in other cities <laughs> and with other teams. I feel like I've seen it. I feel like I could put my finger on it. I have not seen it here in many, many we'll years. We'll talk about it. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to set the menu, but let's. The first thing I'm going to say on the menu is we're going to pay off the incorporator because I need something to cheer me up sure, right me away. Too. And let's get to it so we don't Jesse forget. Agler is a magician. And we can always play it again later, but let's uh, let's set it up. So yesterday at uh, 8.30, Jesse Agler joined us for his regular Tuesday visit. And Anthony the Butcher gave us the incorporator word for the day. Here's, the, uh, here's your setup. It's a very simple definition. Today's word is biblioclept. Someone Ooh, who steals. Like a I book gonna, I was, oh, yeah. I was, yes, I was gonna make. Yep. I was gonna make him. He could. I, the etymology. I'm sure Jesse could have figured that out. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Someone who yeah. steals books. Biblioclept. What a great word. Yeah. <laughs> he liked so the word, know. but how does it work into a baseball broadcast? So, Paulie, where we did go to uh, the uh, top of the sixth inning? Okay. Last night, right here on 97.3, the fan Jesse Agler and Tony Gwynn Jr. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and Hap takes inside. One ball and two strikes. Talking about all of Jan Gomes' crazy numbers against the Padres. Try and look up how rare it is for somebody to have that kind of success against a team when they've had the sort of numbers that he's got against everybody else. You need the record books. One two pitch is low. Two balls and two strikes. We have a little office here on the broadcast booth level where we keep 
all of the, the record books and media guides and historical information. And we, we sent Dave to go fetch one of the record books last inning. Liner foul into the net above the Cub dugout. But it, it appeared we had been burgled. <laughs> Some bibliotech got back there. No. Ripped off our books. Major bibliotech. Biblioclep, excuse me. <laughs> that was even better. After a port point. Swing and a miss. <laughs> they were burgled. Bur- also, he Did he just create burgled. a completely false yes, story he just in order made to... Is that, a story. is that a new incorporator he technique? Is just genius. Just fabricate an entire story to make the incorporator word make sense in the broadcast. That's... I'd like to acknowledge <laughs> that recency bias is a real thing. That's one of my favorite incorporators <laughs> yeah, ever. That's so good. He, but when he can tell a story and he goes, three, two pitch, like, and he still calls the game, gets right back into the story. He made up a story. You got Tony jumping in there. Liner foul into the net above the Cub dugout. But it, it appeared we've been burgled. 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 Some bibliotech got back there, ripped off our books. <laughs> Major bibliotech. <laughs> bibliotech. Excuse me. <laughs> After a report. <laughs> that is so good. Well done. Good Tony was mixing up his Spanish yeah, because a library is a biblioteca. Biblioteca. Bibliotec. Bibliotec. But a biblioclept. Biblioclept, excuse me. Yeah, is a book, <laughs> book thief, Tony. You learn something new every That's single phenomenal. day. Phenomenal. Well done, so Jesse good. Agler. All right, let's so get into good. this. All right, so uh, this coming turd. up, yeah, we will uh, get to our Padres wrap up and Joe's performance uh, on the three year anniversary of his no hitter. Now, I mean, four shutout innings, and then it just. Just went, went to hell in a handbasket. All, you oh, said hell. All on a, wow. So I, I, I was, you know, I was frustrated last night. Wow, it's uh, cursing we will, and stuff. Holy cow! We will get to take on Woods and don't done. do this in our seven o'clock hour. It is our Major League Wednesday. Adam Jones, seven thirty-five. Brett Boone will be back with us at eight thirty-five this morning. Get some baseball stories, perspective on the start of the season. Interesting to talk to Adam Jones about the Orioles calling up their major prospect. Jackson Holiday is coming to the big leagues, according to reports, as soon as uh, today, maybe so. Yeah, and he's like the fifth best hitter on their Triple A team right now. <laughs> That's how good everybody is doing. I think they're at Norfolk. Norf. You don't say Norfolk. Norfolk. Virginia, yeah. the ties. And they're just mashing right now. So and then be uh, final hour, round of report. Uh, Jen Sturger is going to check in. She's going to be uh, in town for a comedy show, so we'll talk to her at 935. And that's your menu for a Wednesday edition of Ben and Woods. Our Padres wrap-up coming up next on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
can listen to Sam Levitt's podcast, Inside San Diego Baseball. Sam covering everything going on with the Padres. Find it at 973thefansd.com, the Odyssey app, or wherever you get your podcast. I saw Sammy last night. I went down to the game uh, just for the first three innings, but I had a, a few minutes during my, my Channel 10 shift. And I saw Sam, and I was sitting in the press box, and all of a sudden, a bag of peanuts gets hurled at me from behind. Hacksaw. <clears throat> no. One Coach. Randall Leo Jones. <laughs> Just hit you in the hey, side eat of the some head. peanuts, you little P word. I said, Can I have these? He goes, Yeah. That's why myself. I threw them to you, dummy. I started F eating some Higgins. peanuts. It was good to see Randy. I asked him. Since they were talking about Joe Musgrove, they had a video for the anniversary of the yeah. no hitter, and I said, "You know what, Randy? Yeah, I was a little, you know, I didn't get to see Randy pitch. Um, I was too too young to enjoy his prime." I said, "I know. I mean, you were a ground ball pitcher, so you uh, you throw like an eight hit shutout. You gave up a lot of hits. What's the closest you ever came to a no hitter?" And he said, "I once took a perfect game into the eighth inning, and then uh, shortstop." Threw one away. Two base error. So there goes the perfecto. Uh, and the next batter bloops in a single. And that was the only hit I gave up. But I did win that game 2-1. to one. <laughs> But I thought his more interesting story, he said, I once threw a 10-inning, one-hit shutout. God, and the only nice. hit, seventh inning, a little dribbler in front of the mound. It was the only one. Oh. Got to the 10th inning. And uh, bottom of the 10th had a walk-off home run. So it ended one nothing, And they won it on a one-hit, 10-inning shutout. By Randy Jones. Yeah, I don't get the sense he had some really great offensive teams playing no, behind him back not. in those days. And, you know, I, I would hate to see our beloved Padres start to follow that form, Ben. And uh, when you when you see things that happen like last night, um, that's, that's, what, that's what really gets your haunches up and makes you a little bit concerned because... You know, look, I understand. I saw, you know, Sarah's tweeting about this this young pitcher, Ben Brown, last night and, and the stuff that he has. And this stuff was good. I mean, he throws hard, but they all throw hard for the most part. That knuckle curve, knuckle look, curve was, pretty was pretty impressive, pretty nasty. actually. Yeah. I, I get it, man. The guy, again, he's a young pitcher. He hasn't pitched very well. That trend of pitchers like that cruising into Petco Park and absolutely dominating a lineup full of veterans, really almost top to bottom, other than you know Jackson Merrill, maybe um, he's a rookie, and and but you know these are guys that have been around a long time. They've seen their fair share of 95, 96 miles an hour. Okay, they have, and to go out there and and put up that that offensive performance was offensive actually uh, last night watching that, and you just kind of wondered what is the problem. You know, what is the problem? And the momentum thing, momentum game to game, I think is a real thing. Xander Bogart's getting getting banged at third was was tough, and we'll talk about let's, all this. Yeah, yeah, let's get into let's it. We'll have our, our Padres wrap up right after this check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Traffic is sponsored by Air Max, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company. Visit them at airmax.com. Got a big problem on southbound at 5 at Palomar Street. All lanes remain blocked due to a fatal accident involving a couple vehicles. Yes, two people lost their lives in this crash south by Palomar Street. It was touched off by a wrong way driver. Happened around 3.20 this morning. We'll definitely keep you posted, but meanwhile, be prepared for some traffic diversions. Might want to consider exiting at J Street, taking Broadway south to Main Street and then west to the 5 to get back on. A couple of problems on southbound 15 in the North County. Got a collision just past Gopher Canyon. It's in the center divide. A couple vehicles involved. Then a stalled vehicle. South 15, right before Mirror Mesa Boulevard. Tow trucks rolling up to help out with that. Looking for the best in HVAC? Choose Air Max, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company with free diagnostics on all repairs and estimates. See why over 1,300 happy customers have given Air Max five star Yelp reviews. See Air Max today at airmax.com. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Wood, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. It's a shame if they lose. A shame indeed. It's a complete crap. Oh, I did not like that. Here are the lowlights from yesterday's game. Are you f kidding me? Boo. It's the Padres wrap-up, presented by Hamul Casino. With thrilling slots and tables and all the best rewards, Hamul Casino has all the fun you're looking for. Hamul Casino, fun above all else. It's not your fault. 
There's a pitcher on Musgrove to Gomes, swung on, hit in the air to deep left center field. Jackson Merrill is back, he'll watch, it's gonna go. Try to warn you about Jan Gomes. First home run of the year, and the first run of the night. Cubs lead it one to nothing. Here's the pitch, and that's hit in the air to deep left. Perfar going back to watch, nothing he can do. This one into the second deck, a grand slam. Second home run of the inning for the Cubs, and a 1-0 game has just become a 5-0 game. 3-1, hit in the air to deep left field. That'll get it going. Ian Happ back at the wall, looking up. Gonna go! Eggy Rosario, second home run of the year. He's got four hits this season. All of them have gone for extra bases. And the Padres are on the board. It's 5-1 here in the sixth. Teams keep trying to sneak heaters by Eggy, and it's just not a good idea. 1-0 pitch, grounded at third base. Charged by Madrigal, he's got it. Runs it part of the way, then fires across the diamond in time. And the ball game is over. 1-2-3, bottom of the ninth, turned in by Adbert Alzali. And this time, no drama for the Cub bullpen. As their five-run fifth stands up, and they even this series at a game apiece. Well, he's got a nice big arm. You know, he's got some velocity. Um, you know, he's coming at guys. He was, he was in and out of the zone effectively. Um, you know, he was able to really make pitches when he needed to. We just couldn't, you know, put anything together consistently against him. He did a nice job. Mike Schilt, the guy who went to Stephen Kolek out of his bullpen in the fifth inning, did not work out for the San Diego Padres, losing 5-1. to one. And, Woods, you just brought up the idea, maybe some momentum would carry over from the comeback win. Clearly it didn't. Although, you know, they started the game, Xander doubled, and you're going, okay. All right. Picking up right where Here you left go. off. Here we go. Just had the same thought. And and then, of course, uh, on a fly ball to center field to, to Cody Bellinger, Xander tries to tag up, move to third. Out by a gets, mile. Gets thrown out, and that was pretty much the last great scoring chance. They had the one solo home run you heard from Eggie Rosario, but they didn't put together much in the way of rallies or opportunities to score. Manny had a two-out double, but... Just was uh, no offense to be found against Ben Brown uh, in his start for the uh, kind of emergency start for the Cubbies yesterday. I thought uh, Kevin Acey, <clears throat> Kevin Acey summed it up really well in his daily newsletter from the UT. He says, uh, good morning. Talking about momentum in baseball is setting yourself up to seemingly look silly. Yeah, no question. The saying goes that momentum is only as good as that night's pitcher. And last night, momentum's name was Ben Brown. Yeah, well, okay. So by that logic then, momentum is only as good as that night's starting pitcher. Well, we had Joe Musgrove on the mound, and we they had Ben Brown. So I felt really confident in being it. Now, again... Knowing that I've seen this story play out at Petco Park so many times, that's on me then for feeling. So every time we win a game, a close I lost game, money last night, I did it's too. Every time we win a close game, you know, a, a, have a comeback, whatever. Is that going to be th who this team's identity is? Yeah, you come out flat the next day, like because that can't happen. And and to not, I'm shocked. Like it's almost unfathom unfathomable to me that they lost that game last night after the vibes from the, the night before. The way they lost. The way they lost. They, you know, slugfest, you lose 7-6. I could maybe wrap my head around that. They just had nothing. Just they were nothing, lifeless. Absolutely nothing going, man, the whole game. So uh, it's frustrating, dude. It's frustrating. And, and again, right when you feel like you've exercised a few of the demons <laughs> from last year, they're like, no, no, we're still here. We live here, actually, at Petco Park. Jan Gomes, I, I don't get it. He's had four hits all year. Two of them came last night. He absolutely owns this franchise. I don't understand it. It's a weird baseball anomaly. Years down the road, he will tell his grandkids, I literally owned the San Diego Pond. What was his numbers against us? <laughs> oh, they're ridiculous. ridiculous. I didn't hear what Jesse said, but I know. I know. I, know I, I was, like, surprised that Craig Council would bat him ninth. Like, I, are you earning your money? Do you have any idea how much Jan Gomes owns the Padres? Why? I was like, thank goodness he's only batting ninth and might get one less at bat because and, the and guy kills the Padres. Like, Craig Council should be fired for not playing him the night before in the game that they lost. <laughs> like, bro, you got to lose your job. Do you not look at, do you not know what he does at Petco Park? He has a, 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 a he has a, a stand set up at Petco Park. Jan Gomes. I mean, even after the home run, he's got a 600 OPS. He's off to a horrifically Horrific. bad start, but he always, he just always owns us. the Padres. So, again, 
You say the Padres were lifeless. I will say they were ineffective for sure. I don't know whether fifty-one career hitter I, against the Padres. Holy I don't. God. I don't know whether they have. Did the Cubs have life? I mean, they went eight of the nine innings without scoring or do anything either. But they happened to have the one, the one inning with the Gomes home run, and then it just it just kind of unraveled for Joe very quickly in the fifth. Um, you know, loaded the bases, and I was I was kind of surprised that Mike Schilt even had the ability to go to a reliever that fast. But he explained after the game that you know I was watching the pitch count, and Joe hadn't been that efficient even in his four shutout innings. Here's what Mike Schilt uh, said about the pitching change in the fifth, going to Stephen Kolick with the bases loaded and nobody out. I mean, he um, had some traffic, you know, a little bit of traffic in the first, light traffic second, third, fourth. Went out, um, got a ball up to Gomes, put a swing on it. Had a um, longer bat to hat, you know, I think a seven-pitch walk. <clears throat> you know, Suzuki gets another base hit. Um, then, uh, you know, started to have bigger misses. Um, you know, didn't locate the first pitch to, to Belly. Then he hits him in the foot, grazed him, but got him. And at that point, you know, you're sitting there at 85 pitches. Um, in the fourth and nobody out and like i say when the when the misses get a little bit bigger um you know it's not the you know it's a decision you know that i made it's tough to take joe musgrove out of any situation especially the bases loaded and the kind of competitor he is he was um, not happy <laughs> but again you know some traffic earlier and sitting at 85 in the fourth nobody out or in the fifth rather after four um so we go to colic ground ball guy high ground ball guy um, and he can't locate his sinker first two pitches and, and goes to a different pitch, which, you know, you got to adjust a little bit and threw the sweeper and, you know, Merrill put a swing on it. How yeah, was did. that? Yeah, he did. He did. And I, I, I thought at the time, you know, obviously the hindsight managing is, is super <laughs> easy to do. I'm, I'm maybe the best on the planet at hindsight managing. Like no one's better than me <laughs> and all of us out there. I'm so good after it happened. Oh, well, yeah. Obviously you don't want to go to Colec there, Mike. I think everybody knew that, right? Um, Joe His Ma- logic being he's a ground ball guy. Yeah. And they talked about it on the broadcast after the fact. After the fact. He did dial that slider in. Yep. He did. Struck out four, Struck two innings, out. didn't give up anything else. I mean, after his third pitch. One bad pitch. Or, yeah, well, one and, bad pitch. And we were talking about it before the show. Like, What were you looking for out of Kolek there? You probably wanted a ground ball double play. You, know you can give up you, the one run. But you know who can get you a ground ball, and I have a lot more faith in getting me a ground ball, even with his misses, is Joe, is Joe Musgrove. Uh, at 85 pitches, okay. I mean, I understand You know, it's early in the season and all that. Me, personally, I'm riding with my guy. And I'll defend that one. That one is one I'll go... I'll go, yeah, man, it's Joe Musgrove. Like, I'm going to ride with him. I trust him. He's a veteran. He's got, he's done this so many times to make your head spin. <laughs> and, and again, you know, Kolek now, he's not exactly, I don't, like, it was impressive that he was able to dial it in, but the damage had been done, right. you know, I, at that point. I don't so. have the numbers, but. Yeah, I know Kolek struggled with it, and I, I feel like other Padres relievers have struggled with this. Even when they have good performances, they come in and they walk the first guy yeah. or they give a hit to the first guy. They are having trouble coming in out of the bullpen and just getting that first guy out. And when you're a reliever, oftentimes you're being put in in a critical situation. That's a problem right now for the Padres bullpen. Even when they're effective, that first batter, you know, finding that strike zone, getting your spin right on the first batter is – absolutely critical you've got to be ready when you go into the game you can't you don't get like a starter you know starter maybe can take an inning I mean you Darvish usually kind of gets locked in as he goes as a reliever you don't have that luxury of getting locked in as you go you got to come in and you got to be locked in from pitch one or the game can be lost right there. Yeah, and starting game, pitchers, you find it. You, you, you we've seen guys yeah. struggle and then but get relievers, locked in. no no um I mean if we if we let him go, you know he's got to pass through waivers, right? And then the Mariners, you know, send him back to the Mariners or whatever. Because they will happily were, take him back. They'll, ta- yeah. they'll happily you, take. You him will back. lose him if you don't keep him on the big league roster. But you have Alec Jacob. You got Adrian Morhone. Jeremiah Estrada is looking Estrada's really looking good great. right now. He had a three strikeout save last night for El Paso, and he may be he may be the next guy to call up. Now that doesn't mean it's for it's for Kolak. You could send Brito down. You used him for two innings yesterday. Uh, stretch him out as a starter. I, I know, he wasn't bad in his two innings. Didn't strike out anybody. Didn't give him any runs. But it, you could bring up Jeremiah Estrada as another option out of the bullpen. I wouldn't be surprised if the Padres 
we're looking at maybe a, another arm or a different option at this point. Uh, it's it's you know it's not a pan it's not time to panic, but there's always moves you can make and tinkering with the roster throughout the entire 162 games. I'm less concerned about the pitching though. As I said, the Cubs didn't score in eight of the nine innings. Pitching wasn't necessarily the problem. It's the offense. That is the issue for the San Diego Padres. It's not consistent enough. Even with the superstars, they're hot, they're cold. And Manny was cold. He's now getting locked in. He looked good the last Better. Yep. two days, last night. Took some really good swings. He may be he may be coming, you know, into that Manny form, and maybe a hot streak is coming for Manny Machado, but it doesn't help that much unless the guys around him, you know, if J- if Jake goes cold right now or Fernando goes cold right now and Manny gets hot. That's just the same old pod race. Yeah. It's like, can you guys just once all at the same time feel like you're locked in for a while? Not just one game, not just three innings, but how about a week? Give me a week When's where the, the, last o- time that where happened, the offense just kind cow. of, you know, a bunch Clicks. of guys are performing. And, and we're going to talk about momentum. To me, momentum doesn't exist. But what does exist are teams that have multiple guys – who bat near the top of the order, all hot for a week or two. And when that happens, they win a bunch of games. And the Padres, I can't remember the last time that they all were hot. Now, they don't all slump for a week either. They just have a good day and then a bad day. And a good day and a bad day. And ultimately in baseball, you'll put up your numbers when you do that. But, man, is it hard to win a bunch of games consecutively when you just three times a week – Your guys just go quiet offensively. Yeah, you'll put up your numbers, but you're not putting up the most important stat, and that's the win. That's the dub, and and that's what's been eluding this team, the consistency of being able to string wins together, which I don't know, man. Like Again, I, I feel like I've seen momentum. I feel like I've seen momentum in other cities. I feel like it does exist. It's very hard to quantify, obviously, but you think about teams when they go on a on a 10-game winning streak. I don't know what that momentum is. Is it everyone's just vibing and in a good mood and you move the chain? I don't know, but I know that the chain doesn't move here very often, and that's, that's been but, an issue. But it works the other way as well. Potters don't go on long losing streaks that's either. True. That's There's, true. The momentum doesn't... Oh, well, there's a black cloud for a week. No, they could easily come back today and score nine runs. Because this and let's is, be honest, probably This will. is who the Padres were last year, and it, it's who they seem to be early this year. A team that, depending on who the starting pitcher is, they may have a great day, they may have a terrible day. You don't really know. I mean, if you knew, we'd all be rich. Just, uh, you know, just go ahead. But you, uh, unfortunately, it seems to be a little unpredictable, and it just seems to just randomly... Good day, bad day for the San Diego Padres. All right, we'll come back. Padres did make a move yesterday.
little breaking NFL news uh, this morning. The NFL has announced that the Packers and Eagles will play the first ever game in Sao Paulo, Brazil on Friday, September 6th. So the day after the season opener uh, for the uh, the Chiefs, the Super Bowl champion Chiefs, the Packers and Eagles will play in South America. First ever regular season NFL game, or I believe any game of any kind, on the continent of South America in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I would like to go to that game. I'd like to go to Brazil. Never been to Brazil? Never been to South America? Mm -mm. Has anybody been to... I've been to Europe. You've been to Europe. Yep. Any other continents represented? Australia. You've been to Australia. I have been to Australia. Been to Europe. I think that's it. Africa? Never been to Africa. Would like to go. Asia? Never been to Asia. Antarctica. Never been to Antarctica. Joe's been to Antarctica. Joe Musgrove has. South America. I would like to go to Brazil. I hear it's wild. <laughs> you want to go to Carnival. I don't think I can handle Carnival, <laughs> but I would like to just go and meander around. I bet the pageantry for that NFL game is going to look I bet sick. it's going to be great. great. Caprinas and it's, uh, you can get the Jaguars now thinking, oh, crap, they're going to make us uh, move there now. Who's the teams that are playing? Packers and Eagles. Eagles, good, okay. Pretty good, pretty okay. good, pretty good NFC bad. matchup. Those there. teams aren't going anywhere, but anytime the NFL plays overseas, yeah. anywhere international, it's always, could the Jaguars play there permanently? I think I would get in a lot of trouble in Brazil. It feels like there's a lot Seems of trouble. Seems like they're fairly be... loosey goosey. It though. feels like, like there's a lot of trouble there to be had. Yeah, personal but... trouble, but I don't know that you'd be <laughs> held liable for it in Brazil. They just seem like they live and let live and have a good time. Sounds good to me. Down in South America. You don't have to watch baseball all the time and be obsessed with baseball when you're living down there. You got uh, Take on Woods coming up in a couple of minutes on a Wednesday. A chance to qualify for a trip to Las Vegas. It is our musical trivia contest, Tier 1 v. Woods. If you'd like to be our contestant today, you can call in right now at 833-288-0973. Phone lines are wide open. You're just going to have to wait a few minutes until we get to our, our game here coming up. Padres did make a move before last night's 5-1 to loss to the Cubs, sending Grand Pauly down to AAA and calling up Brett Sullivan uh, from El Paso. So uh, something we have discussed uh, at least the last couple of days on the program. Uh, in fact, I thought this was a... Smart move that makes a lot of sense. Brett Sullivan has gotten off to a really hot start, including two five-hit games already at AAA. Now, those numbers are very deceiving because the Pacific Coast League is an incredible offensive league. But I just think from a roster construction standpoint, having that extra catcher and another left-handed hitter, it makes a lot of sense. And making sure that Graham Pauly, even more importantly, is getting – some regular at bats and is not just sitting on the bench, you know, four or five days a week also makes a lot of sense for a young player who I think the Padres still think very highly of. Oh, absolutely. And believe will be a part of this team going forward, may probably later this season, sure. but right now he's not he's not he's not contributing much to the team and he's not getting a ton out of the experience. I'm sure he enjoys being in the oh, big leagues, yeah. but he <laughs> I, he was the first one who said, "No, this is good. I, I need to go. I need to go and play." He said that before we left in the in the clubhouse yesterday, and that's um that's wisdom. That's a young guy being wise about his future. Boys. Knowing as fun as it is to be a big leaguer and yes. enjoy the big league lifestyle, if you're not playing, it's not really helping you that much. Sure is fun though. I bet. Oh, I'm sure it is. I mean, I bet it's just spectacular. You know, they hit white balls in batting practice. As the women to... all have long legs and brains. <laughs> from Bull Durham, yes. Benjamin. Uh, no, it's good for him. That's what we need. He needs to go down and get ABs and get regular work at third base and and all of that. You know, so um, hopefully Brett Sullivan can come up, provide a spark. I mean, the the offensive numbers, as you've called them repeatedly, uh, in El Paso, a mirage, most certainly. I mean, you know, Brett Sullivan is, is fine. He's fine. He's not, again, r- reminder, not a guy that you – Expect to come in and make. He's not an impact type. Bat. I don't expect him to come in and play very often. Hundred percent, you know. But, but I he, do. He gives Mike Schilt some flexibility, you know, once or twice a week with what he wants yeah, to do. Absolutely. Uh, perhaps allowing Luis Camposano to be a designated hitter on a day when he's not catching, yes. because then you have a second catcher, a, a extra catcher, an emergency catcher in addition to Kyle Higashio. Correct. There could be more moves coming this week. Uh, we discussed it. Is a, a bullpen move necessary for the San Diego Padres? Uh, mentioned Jeremiah Estrada looked good last night. He's looked very sharp early on the year uh, for AAA El Paso and had a really good spring as well. I mean, he was one of the guys competing for a spot in the bullpen at the end of the season, and uh, he has started off well. 
Is that something that the Padres need an injection in? I I would argue maybe yes, and not not a panic move, but the reason you have the depth that you signed in the offseason was so you could use these guys. And there might be a better way. Uh, you know, he's a guy who maybe could even be a sixth or seventh inning type guy, a guy who you might bring in a situation like last night's game. Uh, you, you know, with runners on and, and try to get a big out like that. Didn't work out for Stephen Kolek last night. Uh, will the Padres add to their bullpen and we see a move soon? I don't know. We'll see. I think the most troubling thing for me is after the really nice run through the rotation that we just had, well, we're now 0-2, essentially. I know we won the game against the Cubs, but as far as our starting pitchers go, this time through the rotation, you did not have a good art, uh, outing. Joe did not have a good outing. Um, and so now, you know, it's up to Dylan Cease to, today to come in and be a stopper uh, and try to try to win this series today. But you felt like, okay, this is now trending in the right direction. And now it's trending in the wrong direction. You do feel like the back end of your bullpen. You feel good. You feel Matsui, Peralta, and Suarez. Great. So they're 7, 8, 9, and, and we're good. Those middle innings. If your starters aren't going to give you length, Ben, who's going to be able to bridge that gap? They keep throwing darts at the Stephen Kolick board and the Johnny Brito board. Brito was fine last night. But, again, who's going to be the guy, the, the Nick Martinez? Who's going to be – is it going to be Avila? I don't think so. You know, they, they, have a, they have three guys that they're going to right now. None of them are really effective. Well, this is why you traded for Dylan Cease because you're going to have the trips through the rotation where you – I mean, he always has a bad April game yeah, every single year. And Joe's not going to be perfect every time out. Now, when that happens and you don't have depth in the rotation behind it, then all of a sudden, oh, now we got a five five game losing streak before we can get up to to you. You acquire a guy like Dylan Cease, knowing that when your other guys have days off, you've got another potential ace stopper who can come in and keep you from from losing a bunch of games in a row or win you a series today. And Dylan Cease is coming off a. A solid performance against the Giants in his last start. Six innings, four hits, seven strikeouts, two runs. Padres did end up losing that game late to the Giants, uh, you know, on the on the walk off in the ninth inning. But he did his job. But Dylan Cease pitched well, and we'd like to see a uh, a repeat or even better performance. He went over a hundred pitches. Gonna want him to go deeper into the game today. A lot on Dylan Cease's shoulders uh, for this one, but. They need a series win. you gotta, Padres, you got to win a series. Padres have not won a series yet this year. And watching what the Giants are now doing, just tank, just down the – you know, I said yesterday, they're a crap team. And a guy in the chat said, they're not a crap team. They just took two of three from us. And I said, no, no, they're a crap team, straight up. And they're just getting bodied by the Nationals right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a team that you need to beat. Yeah, you, you do have to be fair. If you're going to dump on the San Diego Padres, which is valid opinion, they haven't looked particularly great through 14 games this season, you can't just simply say, oh, but the Diamondbacks, they're going to be fine. They, because they the don't Diamondbacks look great also have not looked great. Oh, the Giants, they're going to be fine. The Padres are the team I'm worried about. No, Padres are still in second place in the National League West right now. They're all off to slow starts Everybody this year. Everybody is terrible right you now. You know, other than the Except Dodgers. The Dodgers yeah. I promise you, at least one of those three teams is going to figure it out. Bet, there's no reason why us. there's yeah. no reason why it can't be the Padres, uh, but not none of those teams has gotten off to the starts that they were hoping so far this season. So be the first one to figure it out and pull away from the other two teams while they're still struggling. Don't don't give them you know quarter. The Dodgers are just laughing right now. They're four games up already in the division. Already. Last year they won hundred games. You know when they had their first four game lead in the division? July fifteenth. They're already four up. It's April the tenth. They can possibly have this thing wrapped up by May if, if things continue to go the way they're going. That's kind of what we want, actually. We want them in cruise control. If the Padres, Diamondbacks, and Giants don't, you know, get it into groove pretty fast and the Dodgers just continue to play, you know, 7-14 baseball, which is not, not out of the realm of possibility for that lineup, they're going to be 10, 12 games up by uh, – by Memorial Day. Fe the, feasibly, they could be like seven games up by the end of the, the weekend. And they could be 15 games up by Memorial Day. And you're going, uh, I mean, NL West is done. I mean, we thought it was probably done to start the year. It'll be officially done before the weather even gets warm. Keeping it real in the chats is when you spend, you win. Were you here last year? Did you watch <laughs> this team last year? Because we, we spent and we didn't win and... We, that that 
So I don't know that that's like the answer. Doesn't hurt when you get Tyler Glass now going out, striking out 14 last night. You know, you're getting production from your stars. Shohei is starting to hit. Mookie has been hitting. Freddie hits. Yeah, Margie says, we spend and we lose. That's exactly Padres right. Padres picked so. up a star, a Dylan Cease. You know, I, I mean, arguably every bit of Tyler Glass now on the acquisition scale in the offseason. Uh, they need him to perform. He's good, yeah. I mean, he's, I, I, he's he, Glass, Glass now. He's not. No. Well, I mean, the value of Dylan Cease in terms of way more innings, way more consistency, staying healthy. You yeah, have your choice. Glass, Cease. I would take Cease every day of the week. Now, if I had to win one game, I'd take Glass now. But uh, if I had to have for a season, hmm. oh, yeah, I'd take Cease and the consistency of 180, 200 innings versus the guy who never pitches more than 100 innings. Yeah, It's twice as valuable, twice as many innings. Hmm. But, yeah, if I just had one game one to game. win, yeah, I'd take Tyler Glass right. now. But Cease if, for the long haul. For the long haul, I'd take Cease. Uh, we lost our caller, so we still need another contestant for Take on Woods. You can get in right away now, 833-288-0973. 833-288-0973. Let me tell you about the prize. It is a two-night stay at the Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino. Two tickets to Cool and the Gang. Yeah. They are backed by popular demand. Residency through 2024. You can get your tickets now at Ticketmaster.com. Westgate Las Vegas Resort and Casino features newly designed premier rooms, part of their $70 million in room renovations, home of legendary Vegas fun. And we've got our five-question musical trivia challenge coming up as soon as we get our contestant locked in uh, here on Take on Woods, which is uh, starting now. All right, we got all kinds of callers now. I got my choice of tier ones to go with. Uh, Take on Woods is brought to you by Valvoline Instant Oil Change. It only takes 15 minutes. You don't have to get out of your car for directions and discounts. Go to SoCalOilChange.com. That's SoCalOilChange.com. I think Andrew got in first, so let's be fair. Andrew, welcome to Take on Woods. How are you? Good. How are you guys doing? Uh, we are doing fairly well. All right, Woods has left the studio. You get to go first, five questions, then he goes, we compare. If you beat or tie him, we'll put you into the drawing for that trip to Las Vegas I just talked about. Here are your category choices today. We've got uh, chow time, musical artists and song titles, including the word eat. Back to school, songs featuring school subjects. And our new category today is royal titles. Five song titles are artists that include a British royal title in their name. Which of those three would you like to play, Andrew? Chow time, back to school, or royal titles? Hmm. Let's try chow time. Chow time. All right. Thank you. It's been sitting there for a few days. Again, dig all the way back and find it. Yeah. Go back a few days. Uh, all of today's musical artists and songs include the word eat somewhere in the name. You'll have 60 seconds. If you don't know an answer, say pass. We can always come back to it if there's time left on the clock. Our first question is our two-second song. Polly's going to play you a little music. You need to give me the title and the artist to score that point. Andrew, are you ready? Let's go. All right, remember the category, chow time. You're looking for the word eat somewhere. 60 seconds on the clock. Your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck, Andrew. Let's take on Woods. Hey, don't write yourself off yet. Uh, Jimmy World, uh, Pat. Which parody song by Weird Al includes the line, have some more chicken, have some more pie, it doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried? Uh, pass. Uh-oh, here she comes is the beginning of the chorus of which 1985 Hall was correct. Which popular 1950s song about a mythical monster begins? Well, I saw the thing coming out of the sky. It had a one long horn. And a... Correct. Which 1977 ACDC song is named after a canine sounding expression that means a situation where people will do anything to win? Uh, shoot, pass. Go back to the song. You need the title. You got Jimmy Eat World. <laughs> Uh, again. Which parody song by Weird Al includes the line, have some more chicken, have some more pie, it doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried. Mm. Let's ah. eat it, like beat it from eat Michael it. Jackson. Just eat it. You got Man Eater, you got Purple People Eater. Dog Eat Dog is the ACDC song, canine related. That song is called The Middle 
by Jimmy Eat World. So you did get two points. Let's bring Woods in. Hang on the line there, Andrew. We'll see. This is a tough, tough category today. All right. Andrew's score is locked in. Woods going to put his headphones on. We'll reset the clock and the song. 60 seconds. Woods, your time begins when Paul plays the music. Good luck. Let's take on Andrew. That's uh, Jimmy Eat World. Sweetness. Incorrect. Oh. Which parody song by Weird Al includes the lines, Have some more chicken, have some more pie. It doesn't matter if it's boiled or fried. Fat. Incorrect. Oh, oh, here she comes what? is the beginning of which the chorus to which 1982 Hall and Oates Man classic. Either. Correct. Which popular 1950 song about a mythical monster begins? Well, I saw the thing coming out of the sky. It had a one long horn and a one big eye. I commenced to shake it and I said, ooh -ee. Pass. Which 1977 ACDC song is named after a canine-sounding expression that means a situation where people will do anything to win? <laughs> You're lost now. Good news for Andrew. Jeez. Category would definitely have helped. I have no idea. None at all. Uh, given the dog a bone. And that's incorrect. That's a, that's a song. Which popular 1950 song about a mythical monster begins? Well, I saw the wow. Thing. What no. in the world? Wow. What? Give me that's the category. A, it's called uh, Chow Time. The word eat was in every single title. You got Jimmy Eat World. The song's The Middle. Oh, The not Middle. Sweetness. Not Sweetness. Okay. Uh, eat It by Weird Al instead eat of it. Beat It. No, Man I said Eater, fat. you got. Yeah. Didn't he do Because I'm Fat? I'm fat. He did. He did. But this was Eat It. <laughs> Stupid. Uh, the Purple People yeah. Eater is the mythical monster. Nope, wouldn't have gotten that. And Dog Eat Dog is the ACDC song. Huh? Canine expression. Andrew, you're the winner that, today. I don't know that it would have helped. Two Gosh. to one. Congratulations. You are wow. in for the drawing to Las Vegas. Terrible. Stay on the line. Paulie's going to get your information. It was a tough category. There's no doubt about that. But uh, sometimes you win some. Hmm. Sometimes you lose some. Sometimes Where's the consistency? When you win, you really lose. Sometimes, sometimes when, you... when you lose, you really win. <laughs> And sometimes when you win or lose, you really tie. Woods, well, I thought you had some tie, momentum here in taking really on win or lose. And then all of a sudden, I'm really, all your momentum disappears no, against the category that you didn't really... It's been pod raising. I've been pod raising take on Woods lately. Win one, lose, lose one, one, win one, lose one, tie. It's very, very... I need to get back to, back to basics. Uh, don't do this. It's coming up next. And I've actually got a complaint about something that happened in last night's Padres game. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm with you. All right. Uh, and I've got a do-do this, and I wanted to get your take on it. I thought it was a really cool move, defending a teammate. All right, that's coming up next after a check of traffic on 97.3 The Fan.
The Odyssey app lets you jump back to the moments you missed on 97.3 The Fan. While you're listening, you can see what you missed, click Listen on Demand, and check out a guest, a feature, or anything that happened from earlier. We've got you covered. Just download the free Odyssey app, search 97.3 The Fan, and tap Earlier Today to get started. Right now, though, what's he going to get us started on Don't Do This? Yeah, we... Oh, which is brought to you by the Craft Taco in Cerno Valley. The Craft Taco has some of the best quality tacos in all of San Diego. Go to thecrafttaco.com. Take a look at their happy hour specials today, thecrafttaco.com, please. Thank you uh, very much. We've got some, uh, a little light was shed yesterday. We we told you about former Dodgers pitcher Julio Arias. Uh, when the incident happened, uh, domestic violence incident, happened a few months ago at a soccer match in L.A. He was suspended um, on felony domestic violence. Well, now it's come out, Ben, He's going to be charged with five misdemeanors. Um, the arrest happened in September. The five misdemeanors will be one count of spousal battery, one count of false imprisonment, one count of assault, two counts of domestic battery involving dating relationship. And they all carry... They a, all sound serious to be misdemeanors. They, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, man, false imprisonment? Ah, same as a speeding ticket. You know what I mean? Like, they all carry about six months... Uh, a speeding a, ticket a isn't even a misdemeanor. A speeding ticket's less than that. A well, speeding ticket like is a just a public intoxication, a violation. Right? Yeah, yeah, like a public intoxication, a misdemeanor. Again, but five of them, you know, they start to to add up. Um, and it said neither the victim's injuries nor the defendant's criminal history justify a felony felony filing. But his his career is certainly in jeopardy. You're talking about a guy that was about to hit free agency, and you know was. Com- projected to to make probably a 200 million dollar deal i don't i don't think he pitches in the big leagues again ben and facing a couple of years in jail don't know if they'll actually convict him uh on any of this but again you, you think about this it's the second time he's been caught up in a controversy like this those are just the two times that that you know about right those are the those are the two times that he's been caught and hopefully the victim is free and clear and on her way to recovery right now, and yeah, there's just there's no place for it in in Major League Baseball or any any type of job. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's a privilege to play in the big leagues, and uh, it, this dude has some serious problems. So they're gonna they're gonna take him to court and and put him through the uh, the process. Uh, my my don't do this isn't nearly as serious, but I'm always su- surprised they they went through changed some rules the last couple of years in baseball, but they. Keep forgetting to change one that should have been changed long ago. And it it popped up again last night in the Cubs' 5-1 to one win over the Padres. In this day of, of baseball, in fact, really in any day of baseball, the rule that a pitcher, a starting pitcher, must go five innings to get a win is really ridiculous. And yesterday, Ben Brown was kind of the victim of that. He pitched great against the Padres, four and two-thirds innings, three hits, no runs, five strikeouts, one walk. Got to 77 pitches, though, and they had, uh, what, a lefty coming in, so they decided to pull him one out away from qualifying for the win. It wasn't because because he was struggling or lack lack of effectiveness. It was the opposite. But but they want to be careful with young arms, and they're denying these guys a chance to get a win. Not not that a win is the be-all, end-all stat, but I'm sure it feels good when you look at your record and you get that W at the end of the day. So instead, they gave the win to the next pitcher who came in, Drew Smiley, who he gave up the home run to Eggy Rosario. Yeah. But because you can't give it to Ben Brown and you have to give it to someone else, they gave it to, to Drew Smiley. To me, this is a simple fix that baseball should have done long ago. If the starting pitcher doesn't go five innings... It's like now, it's at the discretion of the scorer to assign the win to one of the pitchers of the game. But make the starter one of the pitchers that they can give the win to. And if they determine that the starter was the most effective pitcher, as Ben Brown was last night, then he gets the win over a guy, Drew Smiley, who came in, got four outs, gave up a home run. He was the least effective pitcher of the game. Vulture. And he gets the vultured win. The vultured win. And Ben Brown didn't do a thing wrong. The guy was great. He was you know. phenomenal. And like, I, I don't know, scattered a couple of hits. I'm arguing dominant. for the Cubs here, but it could impact the Padres. It could Im- impact any team and any pitcher. And I think to be fair to pitchers, especially now that they're not expected to go as deep into games and they want to protect arms, they want to protect health, well, you have to do this for the pitchers then. At least make them eligible 
to win the game with less than five innings. Now, I'm not saying if you're an opener and you pitch one inning and you give up two, but your team scores three in the bottom of the first, that you're now automatically in line for the win. You're not. It has to. You have to pitch effectively. See the bigger picture, though. Open your third eye. They're they're trying to tamp down on success. Mm. I just Someone, held him back from a win. But now Drew Smiley gets a win. He gets more success. Yeah, Someone gets the win if you win. He is younger. We want to keep the young players <laughs> down. Four and two. That's on Craig Council. Come on, man. You don't overthink that. The, your boy is shoving. He's he didn't at do 70, anything wrong. They, their team won the game, their team won the game and he protected his young arm. He should not care about a stat like a win. He should be trying to manage to win the game. You should never make a decision he, to try to get your player a stat. That guy was shoving. He was shoving. Did they win the game or did they not they win did. the game? Then, then, then the manager did the right thing. They, you know, you're right. Both things can be true. They need yeah. to change that rule yes. for sure. Change the rule. But if I'm Ben Brown, I'm like, really, dude? You can give me one more one more shot at Ch- getting, just change the rule. getting my first dub? All right, this is a pretty cool story uh, for Doo Doo this. DD Mega Doo Doo. Former Padres uh, pitcher David Bednar is had some success. Two-time All-Star in Pittsburgh. He's not gotten off to the hottest of starts for the hot-ish Pirates right now who are winning baseball games and look like they're having fun. This was really cool, and it's not something I've seen a ton of. Um, so they're, they're huddled around him, Ben, in a scrum, a post-game scrum. He blew another save. It's his third blown save this season. I thought this, this was going to be a don't do this because <laughs> – the Pittsburgh fans, even though they they're him. in first place, they are booing vociferously they, to a guy who is their closer. He's like a local guy. Yeah, local and like, guy. They, were, they were mad. They were him. very, very high. Well, that would be got, like Padres fans booing Trevor Hoffman because he had one bad day. They got a taste of, you know, they got to get a taste of playing well, and you start to lose your mind. We can relate, certainly. But uh, so Bednar blows it. Now he stands in front of his locker. He's going to do his job. But before that happened, a teammate stepped in. This was pretty so <laughs> Put on air. Uh, this is the pride of Pittsburgh. <laughs> To everybody, we don't do that out here. Uh, we're a good team. We're winning for a reason. Uh, we're gonna get our man back on track. But what happened today is, uh, I think, unacceptable. And we, as a group in Pittsburgh, got to be better. It's an all-star for a reason, and uh, we just have to be better. So, that being said, two-time all-star. David, I know it's a little emotional. What does it mean to have your guys like that behind you right now? No, it's huge. Obviously, there's uh, peaks and valleys through every season, and, uh, you know, we're going to get over this. It's, it's definitely tough, but, you know, seeing these guys have my back, it's it's, uh, it's huge. That's phenomenal. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Now, again, I don't necessarily – I'm not mad at the Pittsburgh Pirates fans. And Rowdy Telez, he's walking a fine line of telling fans how to fan, right? That's a fine line. No, he just – he told them how to fan. He pretty much did. Yeah, yeah. He didn't walk in. There's no fine line. line. There's no, no fine line. No, he, he, just told, he just told them how to fan. We, right don't, there. we don't do that here. <laughs> Man, I will say, though, that's badass. It's badass. The guy he said, hey, I, we got this guy's back. We're going to get him on track. He's the pride of Pittsburgh. I, I thought that was really cool. I mean, who was the guy last year that the fans were booing mercilessly? Oh, it was uh, – who was it? And then they, they gave him the st- – uh, Turner. Turner. Yeah, Trey Turner in Philly. Gave him the standing O. Goes on to hit yeah. 600 or something the rest of the year. Played out of his mind. You know, it's it's a really, really hard job. The last three outs of a game are the hardest ones to get. He struggled, certainly. Ha- knowing that your teammates got your back in there and them speaking up about it to the media, I thought it was a really cool story. One we don't see enough of. Kez's takeaway in the chat is, are those baseball players or the local fat guys? Well, both. Yes. Both, actually. Rowdy and, and Bednar even the are not the, not the smallest of dudes. But, it, hey, are you effective or are you not effective? And Kez, usually both of those guys have been pretty effective. Kes, both of those guys would rip your head off yep, with one hand. Would. I mean, you would never say it to them ever. <laughs> like, those are some big old boys, dude. Rowdy, Teles, and David Bednar, not two guys you want to run into and start popping off at a bar. I loved <laughs> when it was John Cruck and Tony Gwynn back-to-back in the Padres oh, lineup. so good. Well, they all, they, Crux said it before, and then Ozzie Guillen just said it last week. Those guys tend to be more effective because you can't pull fat. And all the young, the young strong guys can't pull fat. It's <laughs> my new excuse. And that's Don't and Do Do This for a Wednesday. That was Don't Do This with Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. I'll check in with Adam Jones, uh, get his thoughts on the Orioles' big move, calling up their prospect Jackson Holiday and uh, other things in the first uh, week and a half here of the baseball season coming up next on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Woods and I are discussing our Masters picks here during the break. Maybe Adam Jones can help us out. I think he's a golfer. Let's uh, let's just go right to him right now. Uh, joining us is our our friend, the All Star Adam Jones. Uh, who do you like in the Masters, AJ? I'm going with Scheffler. He's yeah. been playing great. I know great. Tiger's been saying he's feeling good, but uh, I'm going with Scheffler's been playing really good, and you know, um, I like the number one in the world. So Tiger said yesterday that, hey, if everything goes goes right, I put it all together, I can win one more of these things. Is that is it important as a professional athlete <laughs> to be delusional sometimes, Adam? <laughs> he, I mean, I love Tiger. If he finishes four rounds, that's a huge win for him this week. That's huge a win. win. That's a dub. Huge yes. win. Yes. He doesn't have to win the tournament to win. I mean, the the odds that he could actually win, he's like 150 to 1. I mean, right. he is, it would be one of the greatest stories in sports history if he won. But he walks in and he goes, oh, yeah, I got I got a shot at this thing. I mean, it's important to sometimes be a little delusional as an athlete. Oh, 100%. But I believe that, first off, four days is, gonna be, is just the tough part. Yeah. Um, just know that if he has to wear his Sunday red, and he's a few strokes within the lead, mm-hmm. he's going to scare the living hell out of somebody, yeah. and he'll make somebody falter yeah. because that's what he does. So, again, the biggest thing with him is the health. And, you know, I've seen him walking around the course uh, yesterday on the practice round. I mean, at the end of the day, why not just give him a cart? That's what I, <laughs> I mean, we've been saying it for it's, years. It's tough. We you wouldn't take one. So even if they take one. I'm, yeah. sure, I'm sure they would probably change the rules for him, but he wouldn't take it. Remember, he was well, teammates it, with Casey Martin at Stanford. Who uh, you know could not walk? He would, and and they would not give him a cart. And I think Tiger remembers that as yeah. go. I'm not gonna. The exception is not going to be made for me either. Part of golf, he thinks, is walking. And if he can't do it, then he doesn't deserve to play. But he's going to keep trying, going out there. Well, he's a, what two years uh, away from the senior tour then, so uh, it's <laughs> that's yeah, that's where he'll be because it's hard to walk these courses. You're talking, you know, eight miles. Yeah, and stuff like that. Like that is no matter who you are, it's tough. And you, these young guys, these young kids, some of them they burn out on those third and fourth days. So the biggest thing with Tiger is health. It's not skill. We yeah. know that. But I just think if he's if if he can play all four days and he's within a few strokes on that Sunday, a somebody's sphincter's gonna get tight. No question. No question about it. Well, it's not his. You know, speaking of that, I I, I can't. I don't really want to repeat it. But tight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Tight B-hole is what they call it in, in baseball terms sometimes. Fingers. Fingers. All right, that's Fingers. fine, I guess. It's just a term, muscle. It's fine. It's just Whatever. a muscle. I'm not allowed to say the other one anymore. I've been in, it's just a muscle. in trouble. Uh, well, listen, one kid that you feel like probably won't be that all that nervous tonight is Jackson Holiday, who's been just been called up to the Orioles. I'm sure he's going to be excited. But, man, he looks... He looks like he belongs, uh, certainly. He's going to be playing second base for your for your Orioles, and I know you're excited about seeing his debut. Fenway Park, a debut. You can't you can't make it any better That's than that. Awesome. That's pretty awesome. I mean, there's no ifs ands or buts about it. Obviously, the Red Sox aren't the uh, name on the on the back of the jersey like they used to be. I seen opening day yesterday, and I, honestly, I was like Devers. Yoshida and who in the hell right. is the rest of these guys? Um, but again, they're going to be competitive as as they always are. But I think it's great for him to start on the road, get his feet wet. Obviously, a, a place like this, like uh, like Fenway. Yeah. But at the end of the day, he's been groomed for this since day one. Obviously, there's more video that's going to be coming out of him on the field with his dad and different things like that, all the home videos. But he's been groomed for this. He's been hitting at major league ballparks forever. I'm pretty sure he's probably taken batting practice at Fenway yeah. before. Was that was with the Yankees and stuff like that. So um, I think the only thing that's just gonna be, if, I guess, of any issue, is the third deck. I don't think the talent level is gonna bother him. I think he's, you know, ready for that. Um, I, again, I, I just think the third deck. It's you're playing in bigger stadiums. The game is just a little quicker than it was in AAA. But again, that's why you when you when you go to AAA and you're playing the first couple weeks, a couple months in AAA, you're playing against major league quality guys. So I think that he and he understands the speed aspect of it. So it's just about getting the reps in the major leagues. Is he going to struggle? Who knows? Everyone has struggled in the history of the game. But this kid's getting caught up at 20, and I mean the future is absolutely bright. He's going to wear number seven like his father, and I, I I can't think. I think the whole baseball world is happy, but I know Birdland right now is. 
incredibly, incredibly juiced for what's going to happen tonight. Keeping it in the uh, AL East, we're talking with Adam Jones. The New York Yankees off to a hot start. They're now 10 and two, which just goes to show you, you take a talented but underperforming roster and you inject Juan Soto. It, you're unstoppable. Sky's the there's, limit. There's absolutely no way a team <laughs> like that can fail. <laughs> What's different for the Yankees than compared for the Padres when they had Juan Soto? Because they're making it work right off the bat. I, it's just different teams. I mean, you can't necessarily uh, say what works, what didn't work. It's different teams, different ballparks, different surroundings. Um, I think, you know, we talked about it with someone else is that uh, New York is a different animal and it's no diff- It's no uh, knock or anything to San Diego or the media of San Diego or anything, but San Diego is San Diego. Let's be honest with ourselves. We, we are sports fans because there's something to watch on TV, but New York, that's a different animal. And I just think that the accountability factor of New York, if Soto, when Soto was in San Diego, he goes four for four cool like we'll talk about that locally maybe it shows on sports center when soto's 0 for 4 it's known in the in the whole baseball world that's being a yankee when cano was a yankee every single thing was known when he went to seattle he had to go four for four for us to even know he was alive so um i think when he i think the market of new york is a place that that forces either you forced to hold accountability or it knocks you down. And you've seen that with many players. Some guys can handle it, some guys can't. I think this is the place that he needed to be to officially just like, hey, put it in again. He, his numbers are going to be great in San Diego, but just a place of accountability. He has to speak to the media. Um, the questions are going to be tougher in New York. It's going to be 40 media people per, maybe even more versus San Diego's, you know. So it's the media aspect of, of it is just a little bit different from New York to San Diego. So I just think the accountability factor again. Not saying San Diego's not holding them accountable. I'm just saying New York is a the scale. No, we know what you're saying. It's animal. the scale. It's our fault. Yeah, yeah it's our it's, fault. It's, it's Madden no. Woods' <laughs> fault. We don't ask tough enough questions, and that's why the Padres aren't as successful. I, I, I hear it. I, that's what he's saying, right? Well, you know, I always, and, and I'm not disagreeing with you at all, but I, I, I get this a lot, AJ, where they go, "Well, you guys, it's you guys are so soft. That's why the team's bad." And I go, "Well." When was the last time the Mets or the Yankees or the Giants or the Jets or the Rangers or the Knicks, the Knicks won an effing thing? I mean, literally, <laughs> like, what are we talking it's about time. here? It's been a long, it's a long time. Long time. Yep. And, yeah, you know, certainly they they expect it, but you can expect all you want. <laughs> you can. I expect. I expected the Padres yesterday. AJ, we were talking about momentum. That that comeback the night before was brilliant. It was incredible. Unbelievable. I stayed up for it. I couldn't believe I stayed up for it. It was a magical, magical moment. You come in the next day. You got you know one of your aces on the bump, and you're like, "There's no way the the vibe's got to be through the roof. These guys are going to be feeling it." No. Just just got shut down by a by a hard throwing <laughs> rookie, and it just makes you want to bang your head into the wall. And it's hard for this team, AJ, to exercise the ghosts of 2023. We're gonna have to move on at some point, but they are too. They're gonna have to show us that they can do that. That's true. I need my guy Manny to get back at third. I think that's where I mean his comfort is, and um, obviously he's a such a. a uh, a master on the defensive end that yeah. just culminates his full game, brings it all over. He's not a DH that, you know, that's coming at 38, 39, right. maybe 37. Uh, so, you know, I'm not, you know, again, he won't use an excuse and I definitely won't give him no damn excuses. He know that. Uh, but I'm just saying as a defensive uh, whiz and a defensive uh, minded person also as an offensive guy, playing defense gives you, you know, just a different feel. Yep. Cause if you get, if you knock into a, you know, a double player, don't get a hit. And your DH, there's nothing you can do until your next at bat. If you go on the defensive end, you can do something about it. So um, I'm expecting it that once he gets back. Again, I'm expecting him to get hot tonight. Okay? Yeah, I think he you already is, he's, actually. He's, I, I he's think the last two days, he's, he swung the bat yeah, well. We he know, had, we he went the, the other way last night, just smoked it. Two line drives over yeah. 108. I think he's almost there. I, I want to ask you, though, because Woods was kind of alluding to it. And we had this discussion about momentum. How real mm-hmm. is it? How... How elu- uh, you know elusive is it as a as a player? Do you do you believe in such a thing, or is each day its own game and you show up and and anything can happen? How did you view it as a player? No, no, no. It's very. I, I, I truly believe in it. it. But at the same time, early in the season, I'm not gonna like game twelve. I'm not gonna be like, oh yeah, we're about to go on a twenty five game winning streak. <laughs> game twelve. 
it's game 12. Like, yep. you know what I mean? There's no, you, you can't get too high, get too low about game 12, but a good momentum would be again, right before the all-star break. A, remember we talked about it last year yep. and it's, you know, it's something that if, if the Padres were able to go like 10 and two, right. Going into the all-star break, it would have put them in a different category. They were able to get hot and get some momentum, you know, early September, which was maybe two weeks, two to three weeks too late. So, you know, some that's when momentum kicks in is those those times like that. But, again, you, you always take a winning streak. You always take a, uh, a, uh, a wave of energy. But don't hold too much. Uh, don't hold your breath too long on, on something that's going on with 12 games into the season. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, it, it just it, it felt like, okay, the vibes are going to be through the roof. These guys are really, really believing in themselves after 8 nothing, man. That's no joke. You know, 8 nothing in the late yeah. innings. Coming back from that was awesome, dude. It was awesome. And you feel like, man, Joe's going to roll into the ball, ballpark ready to go. They're going to light this rookie up. Now, sometimes you run into a guy, and the kid had, had good stuff, but not stuff that – not stuff that was going to blow your hair back. I mean, he was a fastball, curveball guy, and he just had them mixed up and, and kind of rolling over weekly. And just just one of those nights, man, one of those nights in the big league, still have a chance to win the series today against Kyle Hendricks. And how tough is that going up against a guy like Kyle Hendricks, which who's done really, really well like against you? He kind of owns the Padres a little bit. Um, now you're like, all right, now we have to – they have to win a series, and they, they need to do it today, AJ. Well, the worst part about facing Kyle Hendricks is like you know that you're not gonna get blown away. Yeah, but he's just gonna she's just gonna annoy the hell out of you. It's annoying. Like, he's to gonna face. throw the two. He's gonna throw that two seamer away, followed by the changeup off that. He's gonna throw two seamer in, followed by the changeup off of that same pitch. Then the big curveball, and he pitches. What you got to do is you just got to make him uh, uncomfortable, put the ball in play as much as possible. Obviously, try and get the ball up because he's a sinker baller and he wants the ball down. And they have a fantastic uh, defense, especially up the middle. So you want to try and hit the ball in the air as much as possible, and just keep traffic going. That's his. I mean, that way to beat the, beat a guy like him. You got to keep traffic going. I don't know when the last time a major league team put a hit and run on. This is the kind of guy you might want to you you kind of, you might want to do something against sure. like that against because again that's I don't know. I, honestly, I can't think of the last time somebody put a hit and run on in major league baseball. Nineteen ninety four. Tonight might be. There you go. Feels like it. But I think I think tonight might be a perfect night to do that. Just, you know, get do something different. Obviously, Mando's swinging it good. Crone, Crone's been swinging it good. Mm-hmm. Work. I mean, get get just get the guys going. Get, you know, whoever's been struggling, I like you that. know, force him to swing the bat by getting it going. They, they used to always say that. A guy who's struggling, make him swing the bat by putting him to run on him, and, you know, something might happen and get him hot. So just be creative. Why not? Again, I said it a couple of years ago. The way to win is to open up the whole entire kit and caboodle. Yeah. Why hide anything? There's no point. There's no no trickery anymore. There's no trick plays like uh, the Statue of Liberty that uh, Boise State ran a right. few years ago. There's no there's no more trick plays like that. Get it get it done and get it done today. I love kit and caboodle. That's a great expression. Three forty <laughs> start. I think that's like eleven forty in Barcelona. Adam, appreciate it as always. Thank, Thank you, you so much. All right, gentlemen, miss you guys. Miss you, uh, too, miss you too. Uh Before the top of the hour, let's get a check of traffic here on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danik. Traffic is sponsored by Air Max, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company. Visit them at airmax.com. No change in that situation in the South Bay. South on 5 at Palomar Street. All lanes or main block. Be prepared for some traffic diversions. This is all due to investigation of a fatal accident. Two people lost their lives in this crash. It happened around 3.20 this morning. So it could still take a while for that to reopen. South 5 at Palomar Street. You might want to consider just cutting off at L or J Streets and heading south on Broadway and then Main Street back to the 5 to get around all that. The Cordell and Cordell traffic cam shows a crash in the North County, south on 15, just past Rainbow Valley. A couple vehicles involved are over the right shoulder. Looking for the best in HVAC? Choose Air Max, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company with free diagnostics on all repairs and estimates. See why over 1,300 happy customers have given Air Max five-star Yelp reviews. Five-star Yelp reviews right there. Thank you, Kelly. Sneaking it in. <laughs> why Air Max? Simply, Simply the, the best. best. <laughs> Right before the top of the hour. All right, we'll come back. We have uh, two more hours to go here on Ben and Woods. We'll Shocking. reset things. Brett Boone going to join us. Boone. It's uh, former All-Star Wednesday here on Ben and Woods. He will join us at 835. Uh, still lots to get to with Ben and Woods. Don't go away. San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, the fan.
Mm. Halfway home on a Wednesday. Mid, mid, midpoint of our week here on Ben and Woods. We got half of it in the bag, half of it to go. Thanks so much for being here. Really appreciate it. After a uh, another rough one last night for our beloved Padres, we will get through it together. Promise you we'll be here for you for 162 uh, of these. That is a promise. I'm Woodsy. That's Paul Rindle, the executive producer. Ben Higgins, your friendly neighborhood sports anchor, uh, joins us as well. Did get a chance to. I was watching the broadcast last night, and uh, the Mike Winters uh, scene is one that I, I watched last night. And again, I saw a lot of um, commentary about it. Not all of it good. I think I saw one person say, hey, I enjoyed that. Um, I'm Again, I, I don't want to belabor this every week. They're going to do it, what, once a homestand. The whole game, essentially, he's going to be in the booth. And I think that's a touch over. I, like, I feel like it takes away from Don and Mud. And that's when I'm watching the Padres on TV, that's who I want to hear. I want to hear their shtick. I want to hear their commentary. My Having another body in there is no matter who it is, really. I mean, it's weird when they have Eric Gruppner up for an inning. You know what I mean? It's just weird. Like, it's just that's the two. It's, it's Mud and Don. That's what you want to hear. And then having an umpire in there talk about how – you know, the ins and outs of this and that, and this is where I stand, and, oh, you can see him here. He gets down to one knee, and it just do it for an inning, I think, or yeah. when when needed. It's uh, it's interesting. I understand that the Padres are kind of in a little uh, uncharted territory here with their broadcasts, not, you know, having to put it all together themselves. I like the idea. I like them thinking outside of the box here. I think the best way to do it, like if you told me that they could have Mike Winters or any other umpire – at home, even in an office with a headset connected to Petco Park, and he had the same feeds on screens in his office that Don and Mud have, just like what they do in the NFL, like Gene Sterritt sure. or something. Yeah, and we like, said the same thing last controversial week. Controversial call. Let's see what the uh, former MLB umpire Mike Winters has to say right here in this moment. I think that would enhance the broadcast. Be great. Be that, great. But that's you know, what I, that's what I thought they were going to do. Me too. But I, you know, I kind of realized having worked in television a little bit in football. You're going to have, especially the fact that, you know, Gene Steratore is sitting there and monitoring on a Sunday. There's a bunch of games and, you know, he's popping in different games at different times. And there's always one or two rules, controversies. If you had a baseball umpire sitting there, you may go five days and never need him. That, I mean, baseball so? oftentimes is... <laughs> so, yeah, you say. So what? It, it doesn't hurt you at all. We'll do one... But then you're paying a guy, essentially... To sit there and watch a game and maybe not do anything for a week. So? I mean, I'm not saying you can't afford do it. Us, but do I a would, segment with it. I would guess that there's one instance per game yes, minimum. The where running you up would the be line. Up. The, yeah. the play. I don't, I, don't think it, I don't think there would be. I think we remember those incidents when they happen because they're notable. There's but a challenge every game almost. Th- there's challenge in about half the games, I would say. Yeah, I feel like there's enough challenges to And even, to talk even about. when there's a challenge, like last night, the Padres won a challenge at first base. Shockingly. You know what the commentary would have been? All right, let's bring him in. Uh, yeah, he clearly beat the throw. Thank you. I mean, anyone, Don, Mud, everyone saw that. Everyone at the stadium saw it on the first replay. Instantly they knew the call was wrong. The challenge was going to be successful. There's, there was really would have been no point of even going to the umpire in that situation. So I sort of understand why you just can't have a guy. I'm trying to be optimistic here. I'm trying to find I, ways for it to work. I, I get it. And I um, I have enjoyed some of the insight that he's given over the first couple of games. That's going to run out, though. Yeah, dude. You know, There's you've only, only so got, you can ask you only got so many stories and so many insight. And we've got, I don't know, what, 15 homestands left yeah. to do this again and again and again. There's just going to be nowhere to go with it. And I agree with you, Woods. I I feel like ultimately it's just going to take away from Don and, and Mud, who do such a great job that they don't need that extra voice in the booth. And I'm not I'm not saying anything against Mike Winters, but there's just a limitation to how much he's going to be able to contribute over the course of the season. And yeah, if there happened to be a really interesting rules controversy in a game, I'd love to get an umpire's perspective. But it's tough to ask you got to sit around for 162 games and it's yeah, not. Look, we may we may go to you 14 times over the course of the year. It's not hard at all. I wouldn't. It's a yeah, dream like, job. Here's the job. You want it? <laughs> yes or no? Yeah. <laughs> I guess so. I, I don't know that I get much satisfaction if if I knew my job was to sit here for four hours. He watching a baseball game in a great spot. Like 
That's a good gig. If you're not umping anymore, I mean, that's a... And again, they'll call on you. Or again, do a segment. Do they a, were talking about you how... Can, you can go around the big leagues, right? And say, Mike, check out this play from last night in the Twins-Orioles game. Sure. What is your... Like, you uh, don't have to do that. You're on a pitching change That's not a bad something. idea. It just, it's like... It's you can like, find a way to incorporate it. The umpire's shortly. like... The umpire's question of the night sort of thing... And not yeah. all, have an all game okay. a running if, if Adam said, conversation. If Adam said you guys have to have blank in for a full show once a week, it's weird. It's not <laughs> that's not the vibe of the show. I mean, Don and Mud were talking about how, you know, three years ago, last night, Joe Musgrove threw the no hitter. They were at Petco Park calling that game remotely, remotely on screen. Yeah. Don't tell me that Mike Witters can't sit in his office downstairs <laughs> and have all this equipment in 2024. Yes. That's what I'm saying. He yeah. can do it from home. No, I'm not saying technologically it wouldn't work. I, If I'm Mike Winters, I mean, yeah, I guess I get getting paid, but I don't know that I get a lot of satisfaction out of a job Find where else to do it then. They're, they only go to me once every six days. And, like, and you've got to be ready for... Who doesn't want to get paid to only work once I, every six days? I think you're Sounds underestimating. <laughs> Having to always be ready to go on television at a moment's notice yes. and then never getting called on. I Your job hate, is to I would watch these that. games and be ready for a controversial call. Bro, it's just a segment. It's like you can just do a segment a day. A segment I, I'd want to be guaranteed at least a segment a day. If I was going to be ready and get myself ready and camera ready on television every single day to oh just not be on. My. Just to not be on? Camera ready. They don't put what Gene Steratore on camera. It's not a Spielberg it's a little, movie. They like, put a little lower than the graphic. I got three hours of makeup before I mean, you can't my... just sit around in sweats and then You're when they need the you. Game. But you can't. You, can, you have to at least be somewhat presentable, nice, Damn. showered, you know, Watching hair NFL looking game. nice if they're going to go to you on television. When they go to Mike Pereira or Gene Steratore or anybody they, else, but it's they, a little graphic that says voiced, you know, like on, you, on the line You see them. You, they... They're they're in a studio somewhere when they do that though. They're not at home. They're in a New York studio. They don't have to be because it just shows it doesn't show them on the broadcast. But they are, and but they do. No, you see them sometimes. Sometimes it's the voice, but sometimes you're, they go to. You're splitting well. hairs here. I think you're reaching. Yeah. I think you're reaching a little bit. The getting ready for TV bit is a reach, in my opinion. <laughs> He's just an umpire. That, All right, you you show up to work every single day this morning looking presentable for television. I look He kind of does. We're on television a right camera. now. I don't feel like I am. I look I, fantastic. I You're I telling do not... me you'd be upset if they were like, you know, oh, crazy call at third base. Let's go to uh, Mike Winners. Let's bring him in, get his thoughts. Right. And if he was wearing a t-shirt and a hat, you'd be upset or not. like who would care? Nobody. No, that's a good point. I wouldn't care. I would do you think he'd either. actually do it though? Yeah. Just... I mean, bro, <laughs> it's gig's a dream gig. dream gig. You hey, you're going to come we're going to watch 81 games I, here. I, I still I don't think it's a dream gig. Watching baseball, sitting there on your ass. Maybe they're calling you. Maybe they won't. <laughs> in the box, like it's fantastic. There's not a lot of well, satisfaction. You have to watch there. every single Padres game in its entirety. You might have to talk about it. You might not. Either I, way, you're getting paid. I do it anyway. <laughs> that's it. No, I just again like I saw that's that was just one of the topics uh, of last night. I see. I just I think it's good. I think it's good. I just think it can be tailored uh, a little bit to be better because taken away from those two guys and their chemistry in the booth, uh, I never want that. I always just want to see the. I want to see those guys do it. You know, I really do. Um, I don't even like when I go see a band and they bring somebody out for like four songs. I'm like, I don't want to see this. I want to see you. I came to watch you play. You know, I, and and so I think, you know, I think it can be done. I like the idea. I really do. But I think the execution. It's a work in progress. It's, a work, it's been work in progress. twice already yeah, this for year. Sure. So, yeah, for sure. They certainly don't need him every inning of no, the game that he's you on. Don't, you don't. I don't think you need him every inning. I really don't. No. Have a cool feature with him. You know, do something like that, and then so they don't feel the need to like bring them in. What were your thoughts on that that pitch? <laughs> you know what I mean? It just feels a little forced. Uh, yeah, somebody said Ben and Woods in the booth. I would do. I would like to do uncensored. <laughs> On uncensored, me watching a game uncensored, like the Manning cast, is, but the Ben and Woods cast of the game, yeah, where I could let it rip. Because, boy, that would be entertaining. You guys would be surprised. I saw a tweet yesterday that said the average person, Paulie, says between 80 and 90 curse words a day. And I was like, oh, I mean. 80 and 90? 80 and 90 a day. I am. I am well, you I'm, need to say 160 to average that out between the two of us. Uh, well, right. Exactly. Once <laughs> I have to do double for you. But I get that by I get that before, before the 8 before o'clock we hit break. The air. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. No question about it. So that would be, that'd be what you get. 
uh, on the the Ben and Woods cast for it's sure. Called the member stream. Once yeah, a the month. tier one gold member stream. Yeah, you guys have heard heard me on there. I go nuts on there. <laughs> and watching a game, it's even worse. Watch me watch a Seals game one time on the road. Oh, it's amazing. I haven't screamed a curse word into that. Mic. Would they go nuts? Would we? Let's say they did set that up, like the the uncensored yeah. streaming Ben and Woods commentary of a Padres game, like an alternate channel to Don and Mud. If you wanted to watch it a different way, how much trouble would you end up getting in? A lot. That's the problem. A lot. Like. Play, you know, things we get back to the players, yeah. to Mike Schilt, <laughs> AJ Preller. Yeah. Totally unfiltered is uh, Last can be week. a dangerous thing. Yeah, I get pretty intense about it. And it's not it's not that you are necessarily not giving your honest opinions. I think you are. I'm just emotional. You're just emotional, and you say things that you probably didn't even mean, 100%. and you regret, and go, I didn't really mean that, but I was Correct. just mad at the mad. moment, yeah. and I was saying it. But once you've said it and it's on a – no one understands when they play it like on all the national shows. Did you hear what this guy on this live stream said about the Padres? No one's going to know. that I was just a fan. I was just being mad at the moment. I didn't really mean it. Like I'm calling them like, you dumb SOB. I don't, I don't mean that. I do, you don't, I but mean I'm rooting that. for I don't mean that. They haven't even swung yet. They haven't even swung yet. And I'm like, come on, you son of a – you know what I mean? I get, I get really into I mean, it. as a fan, whether you use curse words or not, you don't mean – most of the mean things you say about or, your team, right? Or tweet. Or tweet. Yeah. I, I really believe that. It's it's a, an emotional vomiting. You know, vomiting out your emotions. That's all it is. It's venting. It's just venting. When people call the radio station, when people tweet about this team. Yeah, I, I see it every night. I'm done with this team. I'm giving up. I can't. I'm not doing it. And I see the same people back on Twitter the next night. I, and I don't judge you. I understand that. You're venting in the moment. I'm a big fan of venting in the moment. Huge. You got to get it out. Or it'll it'll eat you alive. So I don't know uh, the Mike Winters thing. I hope they make some adjustments to it because you know the more Mud and Don I can get, the more Jesse uh, when he was on, you know, because because Winters was on with him the first week. The more of those guys I can get. That's what I'm looking for in a broadcast, right? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I mean, the chemistry in baseball is so important when it comes to broadcasters. And, it is, and we're so lucky here with Don and Mud and Tony and Jesse. Guys who have chemistry, who can do an entire season together yeah. and still like each other and get along and, and have that chemistry, it's it's just a delight. Speaking of Jesse, if you missed it earlier, had a great incorporator <laughs> from uh, from last night. We'll play it for you when we come back. And then Brett Boone will join us at the bottom of the hour, host of the Brett Boone Podcast, all ahead with Ben Woods after a check of traffic with Kelly here on 97.3 The Fan.
Just had a uh, delightful incorporator last night with Jesse Agler. If you missed it, we played it earlier, but I want to bring it back because uh, Jesse Jesse really went above and beyond in working the word. As he tends to do. Biblio clept into last night's uh, broadcast. Let's bring it back. We don't need the setup again. Let's just get right to it. Sixth inning. Tony and Jesse on the mic here on 97.3 The Fan. And Jesse's challenge that we gave him yesterday was work the word biblioclep, someone who steals books into last night's Padres Cubs broadcast. Here's the 0-2 pitch, and Hap takes inside. One ball and two strikes. Talking about all of Jan Gomes' crazy numbers against the Padres. Try and look up how rare it is for somebody to have that kind of success against a team when they've had the sort of numbers that he's got against everybody else. You need the record books. One-two pitch is low. Two balls and two strikes. We have a little office here on the broadcast booth level where we keep all of the, the record books and media guides and historical information. And we, we sent Dave to go fetch one of the record books last inning. Liner foul into the net above the Cub dugout. But it, it appeared we'd been burgled. <laughs> Some biblioclep got back there. Ripped off our books. Major bibliotech. Biblioclep, excuse me. <laughs> so good. Have to report that. Swing and a miss. Portland. Fantastic. It's all. It's it made my day. It was a crap game. It was the only highlight last night for me. Manny getting that oppo double. That when 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 he starts going oppo like that, that means it looks like he's getting starting to get locked in, come around a little bit. He's at least feeling good. He's feeling good. I saw him out there grinding. Uh, somebody had tweeted us a video of him out there grinding early BP and and you know listen, that's that's what you want to see. Manny going oppo like that it was like Will Myers. Remember when Will Myers would start driving the ball to that right center gap, and you're like, ooh, we got a hot streak coming. He was as streaky as it got. Like, Will Myers would look like Ted Williams for about two weeks, and you're like, and it was always that right center gap for him, man. He'd just wait, 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 boom. And same with Manny. When Manny starts going oppo like that, you know, it, you feel like good things are coming. And there was Eggie's home run. Yeah, and, that was nice. Uh, this was a great stat from uh, – too much Mortons on Twitter. This I didn't realize. It. Very very small sample size. But entering today, Eggy has a 263 WRC plus weighted runs created plus. A hundred is average against left handed pitching. Yeah, against lefties. Against so that's essentially like greatest player of all time. Correct. And his against right handers in his career three. <laughs> three. Plus. Okay, so he that's your platoon that's guy. That's uh, as strong of a platoon as you can get. Greatest player of all time against, against worst lefties. player of all time yeah. against righties. So Three. You got to make sure you mm. only get Eggy in against left-handed pitching. And murder the left-handed pitching. That is. But against right-handers, he's essentially, you might as well send a little leaguer up there. Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen such, I mean, again, what small dis- sample what a size. Disparity. But that's a career split of <laughs> Epic proportions right there for Eggy Rosario. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Nice to see him get a hold of one, though. Yeah, it was. That was fun. He, uh, he made a couple nice plays. He has four hits, too. two homers, two doubles. Yeah. His, his slugging percentage is 800. His right. batting average is like 250. Right. <laughs> I mean, it made some, some nice plays defensively. You know, there's a couple balls to, you know, Tyler Wade is starting to be starting to become Tyler Wade. I mean, be honest. I, and I said yesterday, and I stand by this. These aren't the guys we should be riding. You know, the, the, don't worry about what Tyler Wade does. Don't worry about what Eggie Rosario does, right? Tyler Those, Wade will be in the lineup today. He I can will, almost promise yeah, you. Yeah, he probably yes, Kyle will. Kyle Hendricks is a right-hander. Unless Brett Sullivan gets a start at third base or something. You I know, guess. For another lefty yeah, bat. Yeah, it is possible. Know, it, it's, it's possible. possible. Um, you, would, you would assume they're going to get him in the lineup today. Brett Sullivan, the uh, the savior of the San Diego Padres, as well, it were. Well, I mean, either he or Higashioka will probably catch. Sure. Somewhat of a day game after a night game. It's kind of a a late afternoon game after a night game. It's like Linner, but can't, <laughs> can't lunch, he caught the dinner. last two, so he's <laughs> he's probably due for a day off. And you got uh, a real day off tomorrow, so you can get him off his feet for for two games if you do that. I see. I, I think but do you I, go with Higashioka or I, do you go with I, the lefty now against a right-handed starter in Hendricks? I'd I probably go with Sullivan behind the plate, but that means what is Wade has to play third. I, I have the uh, audio. If we want to hear from Schultz, he was asked about it before yesterday's game. Like, what is their plan for, for bringing Sullivan. up Brett Sullivan? Call Brett Sullivan. 
Yeah, so, I mean, you know, we call Sully back. He's done a great job in AAA, had a great spring for us. Um, you know, it was a conversation into the end of the camp about, you know, him staying or, or not being on the club. It goes down and has, you know, two five-hit games um, in, in, in El Paso. You know, it's also it was more about or equally about, you know, Graham Pauly just going and playing, you know, going to get those consistent at bats. You know, a lot of positives came out of Graham being with us, um, you know, he proved to, not that he needed to. He, he earned his spot on the team to, to start the season. But, um, you know, just trying to figure out the balance of, of still developing here at the big leagues um, and then getting the opportunities to to other guys performing as well and him just being able to go get those consistent bats, go play. He's done a lot of work to improve himself in all areas. But now it's time to, you know, he hadn't experienced AAA yet. So, um, you know, go down there, play. Um, move around, get your bats, and be ready to come back and contribute. He did a great job when he was here and how he handled it, and now he's got that experience to grow so from. More about Graham Pauly. Than yeah, more about Paul. I was curious because, I mean, they didn't send Higashioka down, so I was like, is he coming up to play corner infield? Is he a third catcher? Is I mean, I think, both? You, I think you just roll with Tyler Wade again at third and, and Sully behind the dish. You get a couple left-handed uh, bats in there. Campy gets a day off, which is unfortunate. I mean, he is, you know, but – He's available off the bench if you need him, I guess. Um, and with Manny kind of stuck in well, the DH spot, that's, yeah. That's if you if you, you start do. Sullivan behind the plate against a righty, and then they put in a lefty later, you can pinch it with Camposano, and you still have yeah. Higashioka to catch, catch if you need to. If you need to, sure. So you've that's got the, that. The... You've got that with three catchers, extra flexibility for Mike Schilt. And uh, Kyle Hendricks, so far uh, this year, is is the pitcher that they're going to be going up against, Benny. He's 1-1 one and one right now. ZRA's right around 11 again. No, I'm sorry. 12-27 is his uh, ERA right now. Uh, got, I got 11-74. Oh, is 11-74? Okay. Yeah. He's uh, given up five, five earned runs in each start. One to the Dodgers. 17 right. hits in seven and two-thirds innings. Ooh. He's been... Absolutely beaten around the diamond in his first two starts. Yeah, three bombs given up. He's walked uh, four, struck out six so far. So expect him to get back on track at yeah. Petco Park, which is one of his favorite places. To, Dylan uh, Cease has a whip under one. Cal Hendricks has a whip of 2.74. Good Lord. So obviously bet the house on the Cubs oh, today. Yeah, yeah. no doubt. <laughs> no doubt. Because that's how it seems to go in baseball. Every sign is telling you that Padres should win this game and take the series. But we thought that last night. Too. I absolutely thought that last night. If if they do, though, they put themselves in good position. Because at the beginning of the week, I said, three and three week is solid against the Cubs and Dodgers. Take two out of three. You go into L.A., hey, steal one, get two, and then you had a fantastic week. You go four and two, it's still in the cards. You would have a terrific week. It's still on the table for your San Diego Padres. Kind of got to get a win today to have that still on the table. If you lose, you're going into L.A. going, we need to win this series just to split the week. We need to sweep the Dodgers to have a winning week. That's not a position you want to put yourself in. You win today, totally different scenario going into the weekend in L.A. Big game. Big game for your San Diego Padres. Got a suggestion in the chat. Hosmer and Myers bring them back. One of them can DH while we send Manny down to get his swing on track. I'm going to uh, take off for the rest of the day. Oh, Manny's... I'm going to go have a drink. I think that's just satire, right? I don't know. I'm going to have a drink. I Gotta think that's be. satire. I'm going to shut it down. Ha, ha, ha. I'll see you guys. Satire. See you guys. Very <laughs> funny. Very funny, people. Very funny. We'll see you tomorrow. Uh, why don't we just call it Brett Boone? He's going to be on our, our show next. I'm sure he could just come out of retirement and put Ooh. up all-star numbers as well. i got to ask him about his first pitch. I think it went well. Oh, I think right. It okay. did. Uh, I didn't Brett, see any viral fans. I didn't see any viral fa- I saw All I saw was him running towards David Bell, who caught the ball. But I didn't see how the pitch went, so we'll ask him next. Brett Boone coming up uh, next on San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan.
Got Brad Bone coming up, and I know we've had uh, some incidents and uh, unfortunate conditions on our roadways. So let's uh, quickly get a check of traffic here with Kelly Danick on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Danick. Traffic is sponsored by Air Max, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company. Visit them at airmax.com. Investigation continues for that early morning fatal accident south on 5 at Palomar Street. All lanes remain blocked. They've reopened the L Street on ramp to south on 5, however, so we'll keep you posted on that. South on 5 lanes still blocked at Palomar Street. The Cordell and Cordell traffic cam shows a new crash on the Lake Murray on ramp to westbound 8. Looking for the best in HVAC? Choose Air Max, San Diego's highest rated heating and air company with free diagnostics on all repairs and estimates. See why over 1,300 happy customers have given Air Max five star Yelp reviews. See Air Max today at airmax.com. And Kelly Danik with Ben and Wood, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3, the fan. And we're joined right now by Odyssey MLB insider Brett Boone. Insider calls are presented by Granger with supplies and solutions for every industry. Granger has the right product for you. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. Brett is also the host of the Brett Boone podcast featuring the most notable names in MLB and around sports every week. Brett, good morning. Morning, Ben. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. So uh, I'm sure you saw the Padres comeback victory on uh, Monday night. Oh, he did. He texted me. He said, that's how you, that's how you come right. back. Do, so what was the most memorable comeback in your career? Do they oh, stick yeah. in your mind? Do you have one like, oh, yeah, that was a great comeback? Um, <laughs> quite contrary. I, I have a comeback. The again. other way. Oh. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was. Oh I think it was 01. I think they still play it on MLB Classic. To come from a head <laughs> loss. We were in Cleveland. Yeah, up. I had the day off. Lou Pinella, Booney. No matter what, a hundred percent. I don't care what it calls for. You are not playing today. Don't even bring your spikes into the dugout. Okay. Sounds good. Six sixth inning. We're up twelve to one. No problem. I, I, I remember it vividly. Twelve to six. 12-8. It's 12 to 10. And then all oh, of a no. sudden, Jay Buner looks to me and goes, Boone, you realize if Omar Vizquel hits a double right here, we're tied, and you're going to have to pinch hit. And he starts laughing. Now he's on the DL at the time. Vizquel wraps a double into the corner. He looks at me. He's cracking up. He's not available, so he doesn't have to worry about it. Sure enough, next inning. You know, I forget what any of it is. So forgive me out there, audience, if, if I'm getting the actual numbers a little off. But it's this is the gist of it. Lou comes walking down the deck. I'm hiding behind, like, three players. I'm like, there's no way. He already promised me. The promise is a promise. <laughs> and I'll tell you what. He turns around. He looks at me with that with that Lou way, he disheveled. He just kind of throws his arms up in the air. He goes, son. He goes, I'm sorry. You got a hit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I run off. I am so, I've never been more unprepared. Frazzled. I come out, John Rocker's pitching. Oh. He was a teammate of mine a, uh, the year previous in Atlanta. I know, all right, Johnny ain't going to, he ain't going to throw me certain pitches. I'm looking at the other. Uh, next thing you know, I'm 0-2. I think I battle it to 2-2. Punch out. We end up losing the game. Oh. The only, the only positive about it is is that was 2001 where we won 116 and we were like 15 games up in the division so it wasn't as big of a loss as it as it possibly could have been so that's my quick story <laughs> that was incredible by the way and and i, lo- I love those i could listen to those all day talking to brett boone here on better woods and you know the we we were all excited yesterday obviously and i i'm not i'm not embarrassed about being excited about a a comeback down eight runs it was it was awesome it was awesome theater uh, I was really proud of the guys. It was it was nice to see. You know, I've been saying, you know, the stars here need to do star like stuff. You know, and and for Tatis to be one of those stars and and to to get that bomb, I thought was pretty sweet. I, I really thought in my heart of hearts, I'm like, there's no way they lose today. No way. Come rookie on the mound. You know, yeah, he throws hard, but everybody throws hard. They're going to absolutely take it to this kid and eat his lunch for him. Uh, <laughs> and I should have known well, better, man. Base, uh, yeah, Woodsy, it's baseball. You never. You're right, though. After that dramatic of a comeback uh, the night before, usually it's followed by a win if more times than not. But, uh, you know, Musgrove battled and gave it up to, to the bullpen. Colette gave up the, the grand slam. And, and 
if you, if you would have done it again, then we come back. Uh, who hit the homer? It was Eggy. Eggy Rosario one. hit the yeah, homer. To, right to make it five to one, and you're going. All right, are they going to do it again? But usually that's that, that's that's for not. But I look at this Padre team. You know, division. The only thing I might have underplayed before the season is. This Dodger team might be every bit as good as everybody's saying yep. it's going to be. I'm I mean, sure they are. The it's depth, fine. It's the, but it's the depth. You know, it's the depth that they have. And, and Walker Bueller's not even pitching. I mean, Kershaw's like your seventh starter when he comes back. I mean, it's the depth's unbelievable. But I think the Padres right now, you know, they're six and eight. Uh, and there's been some positive signs for me. Starting rotation's been positive. Musgrove, and, you know, last night was unfortunate. So, so his, his ERA is going to be inflated, you know, it's too early in the, in the season. But there's been some positive things that I've seen here. Bullpen, for the most part, Matt Sui. Except the middle. The, the middle. Those middle those middle innings, I think, is what's hurting you. And if you're not getting depth, uh, if you're not getting length from your starters, Booney, to bridge the gap to those guys in the 7th, 8th, and ninth, I think that's well, what right. Schultz's struggling for right now. That's tough, man. Those are Those are tough innings. Those are big, important innings. The tough part is you have that swing guy, you know, and that swing guy right now is kind of a burrito guy or a yeah. Cosgrove, and it's not it's not panning out. I don't know if they, you know, what they have uh, in the minor leagues as far as bullpen. I just think this team overall, uh, pretty good team, pretty good team, and and not to get too deep in the woods this early in the season. Six and eight, yeah, you'd like to be at least five hundred right now. You look at the division; the division's down as a whole, and I think this yep. is. If if not the most talented division in baseball in the top two, and they're all off to a slow start with the exception of the Dodgers, so I don't think it's it, there's there's no panic button here. This is this is too good of a team, and and I think they're going to be fine. Insider calls are brought to you by Granger for the ones who get it done. Granger offers professional grade supplies and solutions make for every industry. Backed by product experts, call clickgranger.com or just stop by. So Brett, I, I know you're a position player, but you must have heard some things about the rash of pitching injuries. What, what's your kind of take on in all the, the elbow trouble and the Tommy Johns we're hearing about? Is there something different? Uh, you know, I don't think it's the pitch clock. I, I think it's the, the velo that's, that's coming back to bite these pitchers now. But is there anything baseball can or should do about this? Well, obviously that's been the topic, and I've been asked a lot of times. And I've I've gone into, you know, I've called some buddies of mine, some some ex-teammates, you know, obviously pitchers, and I said, I've been picking their brains. What could it be? After all my research, I talked to my uh, trainer with the with the uh, Seattle Mariners, Rick Griffin, who was a, a big league trainer for close to 35 years. I took his his input that he gave me. All right, here's what I think. The way we raise our kids nowadays, you know, from 10, 11, 12 years old, we, we have rules at 10 and 11 and 12. You can only pitch X amount of innings, and if you exceed those, you can't pitch for another four days. That's fine. That's in place. But I think the problem is is now we have the parents take little Johnny after he threw 70 pitches, and he goes and plays on another team in another league where the rules don't affect him, and he's throwing again. I think it's finally come home to roost at the big league level, the way the kids are training baseball-wise at a young age. And I, and I think I think it's wrong. I look it back at my childhood, and it's like I played baseball. I played basketball. I played football. I played soccer. And it was a different time. I understand that. But I think it's the best for kids, I think, to be well-rounded, to give your your arm a break before you're fully developed. You got kids now at 10 years old throwing year around, and I think it's finally hitting the big league level. I think it, at first, when it comes to Tommy John surgeries, you know, and I've talked to <coughs> uh, Dr. Andrews, and I'm sitting there thinking, okay, Tommy John, back in the day, the majority of the Tommy John surgeries were done on big league pitchers. Then it trickled down and it went big league pitchers, minor league pitchers. Now there's more Tommy Johns. For amateurs, young young kids, yeah. than there is for big league pitchers. So I, I I just think if I use logic and just you know what's what's rational, what's probably the the case. You can make a case for the for the pitch clock. I, I don't think that has anything to do with it. For the heavy ball, the way the guys train now, they've always trained with a heavier ball, but now they throw the heavier ball. Could that be something? One of my buddies that was a reliever uh, in my Seattle, they says he thinks the heavy ball has something to do with it. But I think Layman. 
just the easiest way to look at it. I think the way these kids train now at 10, 11, 12 years old, uh, finally in the long-term effects, the minor leagues, do they baby these guys too much? These are developed athletes that are in shape. You know, the athlete today versus 30 years ago is tenfold the way these guys are in shape 24 seven. Do they baby them too much in the minor leagues and they get to the big leagues and ask them, ask them too much uh, muscles they haven't developed in the minor leagues? These are all questions. Simple answer is, I think we're doing it wrong at the at the uh, young the young kid level. Pony, when you were playing, did you ever have a problem with the baseball? You know, like you'd you'd hit one and go that that one wasn't right. Was there a lot of guys on your staff, you know, saying that these balls are not right? I, you know, they used to rub them up with that that Mississippi mud, and and they were all they felt uniform. And, and maybe if they weren't uniform, we just didn't hear players complaining about them a lot. I feel like that's a, a solution that we should we should have had already, but we don't. Well, it's, it's, it's in the industry. I mean, they're going to, they're going to, here's what I, here's what I do remember from, you know, and, and you don't remember as a kid, you don't remember the balls. I'm talking pro level, yeah. big league baseball. The only difference that we would know there's some years it was a little livelier. Some years it was a little more dead yep. and, and it was obvious to the hitters. So we could feel it the way the ball was carrying. And we knew some years they had dead in the ball. Now, I, I don't buy the fact that, oh, it's just, you know, some years it's the luck of the draw. Sometimes they're wound a little tighter. Sometimes they're a little looser. No, I think everything is calculated. I think whatever's going on in the game, whatever they want to see, hey, if home runs are down, let's let's tighten that ball up a little bit. If home runs are up, let's loosen it up a little bit. I think they have complete control of it. It's not one of those things where, oh, we just didn't do a good job in the factory this year. No, not at all. As position players, we knew the, the years that the ball was flying a little more, and it was the ball was wound a little tighter. If it was flying less, obviously it was a little looser. What I did here, and we didn't get into it, from a position player standpoint, I'm playing second base. I don't really care. Yeah. I didn't really notice year to year the seams are different. Where you heard the differences is from the pitching staff and your teammates that yeah. were pitchers, like the seams are – just not right this year. They're this, they're that. Sometimes the, a pitcher would really like a high scene. Sometimes they wouldn't. So that's where I heard a lot of the chatter was from the pitching. Pitchers not complain a lot, ball. right? Pitchers are always they really of, do. Yeah, they're a different. Yeah. They're a different animal. I hated. I hated interacting with them. I hated going to dinner with them. But the main reason was that I hated pitchers. Because one day I'd be on another team and I had to face him. And if I liked him, I felt like it gave him an advantage. That's exactly right. They're like, oh, Booney loves me. He's I, like, he's like right. do oh, damage Dave, right now. Dave Burba. Dave Burba was one of my favorite people in the world. And I used to fa- I play golf with him at Pebble Beach every year. He was on my team. And sure enough, we'd face each other. And Burbs would just be giving me that goofy look like, hey, Booney, it's just cute, lovable Burbs out here. And it just kind of it kind of got me off my game, and I lost my edge when it came to facing him. So that was my that was my test case in the in the future. I just I don't want to be friends with you. If you're old and about to retire, that's fine. But other than that, let's just let's stick with my guys, and and hopefully I don't I don't really like pitchers on my team. Uh, before you go, Brett, uh, yesterday uh, Shea Langoliers hit three home runs for the Oakland he did. A's. That is pretty a uh, – that's, I mean, not the most exclusive club in baseball, but pretty exclusive. And if I remember correctly, you are part of that club. What do you remember about your three-homer game? Well, Ben, which one? Oh, you had multiple oh, ones. What, what a flex. flex. Uh, what a pants. flex. What a flex. Shea. <laughs> no. It's hot. I like that. All right, which one? Go ahead. You tell me. Both were really interesting and, and not – not normal. Okay, one was against uh, – I can't think of the teams I was on. I think it was on the Padres for one. Yeah, the the, that's the, the one I remember, yeah. but you also – I just looked it up. Reds versus the Cubs. Reds versus the Cubs. I hit my first two. I, I remember that was the year because I got to, to storm the Sammy Sosa press conference because that was the Mark McGuire Sosa race. So every game after the game, uh, Sammy had a press conference back when that that wasn't the norm. And I remember I got to storm it because I hit three. All right. First two at-bats, I go deep, I go deep. I come up my third at-bat. I forget. It was a lefty pitcher. A slider went bomb. Okay. I'm looking down the left field line. It's a windy day. It's Wrigley. That thing is foul at least five feet. 
maybe eight. I mean, obvious to the eye. You don't need a replay. It's foul. I'm kind of pissed. I, I take a couple steps. You know, I'm going back to pick up my bat, get back in the box. The umpire, he signals home run. I get on a sprint. I go around those bases. I go sit in the dugout, and I'm my toes tap, and I'm just going, just throw the next pitch. Just throw. This is back before they had instant replay. So the umpires are gathering. Hey, what'd you see? What'd you see? Sure enough, he comes back, confirms that it's a homer. And I knew I got away with it. They threw the next pitch. As soon as they do that, it's in the book. So that's my first three homer. Next day, I come to Wrigley. My first at bat, they announce me, Brett Boone. And a whole crowd stands up and starts doing the home run signal before I even got in the box. So that was the first one. Second one, in Cincinnati. Yep. Oh, you're still there. All right. I'm in Cincinnati. Uh, my third home run, I believe it was Dimitri Young chasing around the outfield inside the parker for my third so it's i have two very strange yeah. strange three craig, home run craig and i did the pregame show on that one 2000 against the reds for the san diego padres in a 10-7 win in june of 2000 by the way dave burba uh, absolutely owns you you had 118 in your career <laughs> against dave burba as i just looked it up <laughs> Hmm. Absolutely. You're that's, right. There's a reason. I got to be self deprecating as well, right? That's incredible. Like, he, he would just smile at you. And you're like, I can't rake oh, this guy. Burbs. To this day, I can't. I mean, he's one of the nicest human beings. He's a big, cuddly teddy bear when he's on your team. And he, when he's on the, you know, he just got that goofiness about him. And he'll just bring up, like, come on, booty. You can't be, you can't get hits off your, your golf. <laughs> off your buddy. buddy. Come on. <laughs> and I mean, Burbs late in his career, Woodsy. Late in his career, the bats are flying out of the rack. People can't wait to get the box <laughs> against Dave Bourbon. And then there's me. I just can't get in. <laughs> I love it, man. Good stuff, Brett. Uh, have a so great much. week. Thank we'll talk you, to you again soon, man. Thanks. Thanks there brother. he is, Odyssey MLB insider Brett Bone. And again, insider calls are presented by Granger with supplies and solutions for every industry. <laughs> Granger is the right product for you. Call, click Granger.com or just stop by. What a flex. <laughs> which what do you remember about which your one? three home run game? Oh, which one? That's, yeah, he had two oh, of man. them in his career. I mean, dude almost hit 300 off of One Tim. for the Reds, one against the Reds. Guy almost hit 300 off of Tim Hudson. Uh, I mean, he owns some really good pitchers. You know, really, really good pitchers. And then Dave Berba will just get you. Hideo Nomo, 306. You know, just huge numbers against some of these guys. Really cool. That was great, man. Great, great stories. Great I know. Stories. I always enjoy a little story time with Brett Bone. That was awesome. Yeah. He he had a definitely different perspective as a player, even than some other pro players. You know, just kind of given his family, he just uh, – Yeah. I mean, he grew Way up different. in the game so much, so it, it, I think it, he approached it a little differently. We forgot to ask him about his first pitch. Damn it. Oh. Next week. <laughs> That's yeah. good. We get That's to talk good. to him uh, weekly here early in the season. All right, we'll come back. Paulie's got his uh, Rindle report. Oh, it's going to oh, get, get emotional, some, boys. Get some uh, oh, emotional – Headlines from an, uh, an opening day in baseball yesterday. Coming up next year on 97.3 The Fan.
Final hour of Men and Woods here on a Wednesday. Annie and Elston coming up at 10 o'clock. Still got an hour? We still have one more hour to go. Now, that won't be the case next Wednesday. Correct, Paul? Next Wednesday. I believe that is correct. We will be done with our show and turning things over to an early pregame show with Sam Levitt from uh, Milwaukee. At yes. the, the Fister. Live uh, from the Fister. Next Wednesday, we have a 9 10 pregame show. So we'll be off about 9 05. All right, we'll still be on for another couple of minutes. Okay. We'll really be dragging at this point. Going, no. All right, we've got four more minutes to kill here. Do you want to hear bad radio? Listen to Ben and Woods on a three hour show. Oh, I'm, I'm serious. I'll do one better. We don't know what we're doing. Here's the long tease because I was uh, going over our scheduling. <laughs> uh, we have a couple other games where you might get like 30 minutes off, yeah. you know, 9 30, 30 minute East window. Coast. Yeah. Uh, May 20th is a Monday. They have a weird. Four game series in Atlanta over the weekend. Okay, but a wraparound series. It's not Thursday, Friday, oh, Saturday, yeah. Sunday. It's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. They call that a wraparound series. Monday, still the getaway day. So they will be playing. First pitch is scheduled for nine twenty a.m. on a Ooh. Monday. Eight. So we will be coming in and we'll be out of here at eight fifteen. Yeah. How bad can we be in I two hours and fifteen one. minutes? <laughs> hey. Do you mind coming can you in? Guys at, start can you come in at four? <laughs> Is it even worth it to come in for two hours? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we could go national and just listen to everyone's draft talk and things like that. Uh, no, two hours and fifty. So we're really bad on three hours. That's shows. not Memorial Day. Is it? Is it a holiday? No, Monday? It's, it's the week before. The week before. We're really bad in the three-hour show. We just like we like just s our pants. We don't know what we're doing. Imagine us with a two-hour and fifteen-minute show. How bad that's going to be? <laughs> I mean, I can't. It's hard for me and to then, wrap yeah. my head around. So we'll be off at eight fifteen that Monday, and then the next week we're off entirely from Memorial. Oh, this uh, Memorial is great. Day. This is great. Now we know how the other half lives. It feels <laughs> great. It's fantastic. Vacation talk with Ben and Woods. <coughs> you were trying to figure out some vacation days earlier. Are yeah. going to be leaving us, me and Paul, for yeah, a few days? I'm going to go. We got a family trip to Hawaii. Ooh. In, uh, that's, that's Ben territory right very there. Very much so. You haven't been in a while <laughs> no. to, uh, to Hawaii. I'm leaving uh, July 31st. Be back the 6th. Don't talk to me. Don't text me. Just bring your equipment with you. You can do the show. Let's do the show. Mahalo. I mean, it's 3 a.m. With here. With time difference. <laughs> you so bitch. 3 a.m. <laughs> Anna will be up at 1 o'clock. Yeah. It'll she be, will. Uh, what, 3 a.m. is when we go on yeah. over there? I called in once from Hawaii, but I had to I had to get up early just to catch the end of your show. Yeah. In in California yeah, with the I'm, time difference. I'm going to forget that I know you guys for a week, <laughs> just so you know. And I've, that I've never heard of the San Diego Padres. I'm going to play with my kids and have a good time and drink things out of coconuts and pineapples and whatnot. And uh, can't wait. Can't wait for it. All right, let's get to some headlines. It's time for today's Rindle Report. And get things started here with our edition, today's edition oh, of boy. the Rindle Report. Now tune into the mother greatest. Welcome to the Rindle Report with Paul Rindle. Hi, Paul. All right. Two stories from the world of sports that we haven't gotten to yet. We'll start off in Major League Baseball. And one story that you didn't know you needed. Are you laughing, Biot? It's the Rindle Report. Hey, Paul, how you doing? Okay, how are you? On 97.3 The Fan. Are you ready to bless the mood? I need some help, please. <laughs> that was good. Can I get a hoist? All right. All right. All right. Uh, gentlemen, big news in baseball. We talked about it earlier with former Baltimore Orioles player Adam Jones, but Jackson Holiday got the call up. We were expecting that at some point. And one of the best moments anytime somebody gets the call up is the video, the moment of him <laughs> getting the news. The video is going around today. I'm going to play it for you guys right here. This is Jackson Holiday sitting down in the uh, manager's office. Jack, what's up, bro? What's up? At first, I just want to commend you for how you've gone about your business down here, dude. Like, that's not easy to do. You kind of carry yourself with a chip on your shoulder. And I, and I think these guys, they notice it and it, it, they feed off of it. Mm -hmm. All right, so keep doing what you're doing. Mm -hmm. All right, it's just a matter of time. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of time. Has your, has your dad been in town? I don't know. They haven't come in? Holy shit. All right. My brother's right in the middle of his season. He's in his season? Yeah. Okay. Um, 
So, I mean, I, he's probably a great resource for you, right? I'm mm -hmm. sure that you guys are tight. Yeah. He's giving you good advice. Mm -hmm. And all those times that you've been in the locker rooms and stuff, you know how this goes. Yeah. Okay. So, for tomorrow, mm -hmm. trying to get guys out early. Um, first, tonight, tonight, I want you to call your dad. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk to him. And I want you to thank him for all the times that he's allowed you to come to the clubhouse, mm -hmm. be on his pass list, you know, let you hit with the big boys. It's, that's pretty special. And it plays into a lot of what you're about. The second thing I want you to tell him is that now it's time for him to ask permission to be on Jackson Holiday's pass list. Come on. Because you're going to the big leagues. Awesome. Hell yeah. That's All right. Awesome. I'm fired up. Well, I appreciate I'm it. fired up. You've, you've been exceptional down here, your brother. You're 20 years old. I appreciate it. You handle all this stuff, That's dude. That's awesome. 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 Thank you. All right. Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. Call your dad. I will. Oh, Call your dad. Um, so I'm assuming that was um, Buck Britton, the manager of the AAA Norfolk team that was delivering the news? Sure. sure. <laughs> Take your word for it. I know this is completely off the point, but Polly was playing the video. Can you can you call it the video just again briefly? He had I set can't. up like a cell phone in the corner of the room just so he could record yeah. the moment. And the camera was trained on Jackson Holiday, of course. But for some reason, Buck Britton has a case of San Pellegrino with a fireman's hat <laughs> yeah, on top of it. Just, helmet. just sitting right in the shot. And I could not... Like, why do you have a fireman's, like a fire chief's helmet on top of a case Baseball of San, players are weird. They're San weird. Pellegrino in your manager's office? Some weird bit, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, they give like, the reliever of the night. Yeah, yeah you can have the fireman's, fireman's helmet. helmet. And you just like San Pellegrino water, apparently. Yeah, 100%. But it was, it was a nice a nice moment. I mean, I'm sure he's been <laughs> he expecting coming, it for yes. a while. It probably should have happened right out of spring training. You look, at, look at his hands. He's just sitting there like, like kind of just kneading his hands together like waiting for waiting for the guy oh. to finish his bit why are you recording this yeah. conversation <laughs> why did you call me in today skip uh really cool really cool moment. always love those moments i uh i mean you get more and more of these moments as you get to 48 but the fact that matt holiday's kid who doesn't feel like he's an old time ball player God, Matt still Holiday looks like he could play. Matt Holiday feels like a current ball player yeah. to me, and the fact that his kid is now in Major League Baseball is one of those moments that does make you feel old. I mean, the fact that Cody Bellinger has been in the league for so long, it's like I, Clay Bellinger doesn't feel like he's yeah, that old no to me as well. So you're definitely getting to a different generation of baseball players now. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I love those moments. Well, that was emotional, happy. This is going to be emotional, sad, but a uh, pretty powerful moment yesterday in Boston with the Boston Red Sox. They were celebrating, what was it, the 20th anniversary of the 2004 team that ended the curse, won the World Series, and they had a bunch of the guys out there, Johnny Damon, Manny Ramirez, all those guys were out there in uniform on the field for their presentation. They had a video. And, of course, one key member from that team wasn't there, Tim Wakefield, who passed away back in October at just 57 years old uh, due to brain cancer. And then we got the awful news. Um, less than five months later, his wife Stacy passed away. She had her own battle with cancer. And you just feel so bad for their children, uh, Brianna and Trevor. And, I mean, it's tough to watch this. It, you, if you don't, like, you're not a human if you don't get emotional watching this video. But there was clips of uh, Brianna was asked to throw out the first pitch yesterday to Jason Veritek, Oof. Tim's buddy, battery mate, etc. Catching the pitch is their father's former teammate and dear friend who has become more All like the a family member behind to her. Trevor and Brianna, Jason Veritek. Okay, Brianna, let's see a pitch. Floated it in, knuckleball. <laughs> nice job scooping it, though, by Jason Veritek on the short hop. It was a fine Monster. pitch. You're a monster. <laughs> How did I know that was, was coming? Simple as could be, Jason Veritek. Very well done. Thank you very much. It's also a catcher, not a pitcher. Yeah, correct. Correct. <laughs> that was beautiful. That beautiful, was a nice touching moment. moment for sure. I yeah. just feel so bad for and... those kids. To, I mean, losing a parent is tough. To lose them both. Terrible. So 
back to back and Ugh. so quickly is and these just are young, devastating. These are young kids. If, yeah, you're, I, if you're listening, I and you didn't realize watching they that were video, so young. I they just are assumed, young oh, children. they're probably like in their twenties or something. No, she's much younger than I realized. It's just heartbreaking, man. They got to hold up the World Series trophy. The kids did, and it was just uh, it was a very very beautiful and powerful scene. Yeah, it's in incredible, incredible. I mean, you're showing people in the stands, everyone's just dabbing their eyes How and wiping their noses. Man, holy hmm. cow! All right, well, on a completely separate note from that awkward transition into it's always a weird story. Um, anybody here have tattoos? I know Woodsy does. Terrible. Ben, one, yes. any tattoos we don't know about? No tattoos. <laughs> Shocked. All right, well, if you have a tattoo out there, this is some news that maybe you could use. Uh, if you have a tattoo that you don't like, you regret, and it has been on you for, I guess, 10 years or more, PetSmart is doing a contest where they will select five winners. You go onto their website and apply, and they will fly you out to Los Angeles for a tattoo session with an artist to have your tattoo that you don't like get it redone in honor of a pet that you lost. You go to PetSmartTattooRedo.com, send in a photo of your bad tattoo that you don't like, send in a picture of the pet that's going to inspire the new ink and they will cover like i said they'll fly out for two nights to oh. los angeles they're going to cover a tattoo session for up to twenty five hundred dollars so you're not going to get like a a full you know, sleeve or a back tattoo or something yeah, back piece but, you know if you have just something on your arm or your shoulder or something that you just you know that was kind of stupid and uh, you want to honor a lost pet I probably would have in my younger days like getting a pet i've lost a lot of pets recently and now I'm like, oh, that sucks. But I, it's not that I'm not sad. I am. I saw one yesterday. It looks like one that I lost last year. One was sticking her head out the window, barking at the grocery store. And it made me a little bit emotional. Yeah. Now, I don't know that I, I, I feel like 25 year old Woods absolutely would have gotten a tattoo of his dead dog. 48 year old Woods is like, I mean, I thought about like a, I think they call it like the graveyard tattoos yeah. or something where you can con honor family members, friends, sure. pets, whatever. And I thought about maybe doing like a paw print, something, something to memorize, uh, memorialize our pets that we've lost. Yeah. And we'll lose. So many. You kind of add to it. Oh, no. Here he goes. Can you see it? You can see it coming. Can't oh, yeah, you? I know I, what's coming. Put pets are beloved, but <laughs> you're going to have probably many many of them over your course of your life you can't if you got a tattoo for every single one i mean you'd be like post i would malone, have 50. post malone at some point i literally just got would have 50 like tattoos all over your face of I mean, your pets i mean i'm 33 otherwise then you're just I'd picking have two favorites. tattoos right now is that it i would only have two all right you've only you have two beloved pets in your life you don't have to do like a full portrait of each dog or okay. something like you can <laughs> you can get creative with it and this one it. though sounds like it's a pretty Serious thing. If they're covering up an old tattoo, we're getting a pretty, we're getting a big tattoo here of a pet. It depends on how big the tattoo is that you need to get redone. I guess a twenty five hundred dollars. So that's a that's a large tattoo session that they're planning for. Satan's bluff is Ben is a rain cloud in desperate search of for parades. <laughs> yes. Like, like, he loves his pets. He's the only person in his family that actually cares for, feeds, oh, walks the uh, pets. They, people feed them. I have to walk them. Walk I do them. all the walking, and, and I, he hates them. I have to pick up all the doo doo as well. He does all the he do all the dirty work. <laughs> but if they both ran away today, you'd be like, all right. <laughs> it would not affect you. You would not make poster boards. You probably wouldn't post even post mention it. He wouldn't tell. They you. Ran, wouldn't even know. If they ran away, they get whatever they deserve. That serves them right. You think you can find a better life out there? <laughs> Be my guest, yeah, you're Reggie stealing, and Shalan. Now you're stealing my with line your kids. Yeah, that I told Bo last you night. Think you hey, got? You don't like it here? Pack a bag, dude. You'll find a better place, I'm sure. <laughs> I'll try the wilds of Encinitas Go and ahead. see how it treats you out there. The mean streets. <laughs> Just looking at me. Of like, Encinitas. Are you insane? I'm six. We had a uh, we had a cat <laughs> and a dog growing up, and I couldn't stand our cat. It Thing oh, was just a love jerk. Cats. He was he was just a little a hole like cats can be, and I was fed up with him one time. And finally, my mom just got sick of me bitching about it and called my bluff. She said, "Fine, take him in the car, drive him to the nice neighborhood, uh, Normandy Park. Yeah, drop him off. Drop him off. Nice family. Well, I'm sure we'll take him in. And I will. Well, I don't want to do that. Yeah, I'm not. Can't do that. Yeah, call your bluff for sure. Old yeah. Jinxy. Jinxy. Really? Jinxy? Like yeah. Meet the Parents? Literally, like oh, a year after Meet the Parents came fantastic. out, my mom. It was a black cat. My mom goes. Got to name him Jinxie, Jinxie right? Jinxie cat, Jinxie cat, where are you? <laughs>
I, I love, love you. you. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have thumbs, <sighs> Parker. <laughs> so good. Thank you, Polly. You're welcome. That was the Rhino Report. Do you have any more positivity you want to crap on today, Ben? <laughs> no, no. I don't always have to be the one who talks. Feel free. What are you thinking about over there? Anytime. Try what we're going to talk about coming up next. I know we've got some Legion tickets to give away. All right, but, do that. Uh, I would like to talk about the Masters, and I don't know how... It's not going to go over. How well. enthusiastic you will be about that? It's not. But, I like it, but it's not going to go over well. I'll tell you right now. Uh, we'll we'll discuss during the break, and we'll let you know what we settled on when we return after a check of traffic here on ninety-seven three. The fan.
All right, you have seven minutes. Seven minutes in heaven. To talk about the Masters? Get it off you're your chest. Me, you're seven letting me go. Minutes. This is your show, too. Letting me go. First major of the year. Uh, par three contest is today. Okay. Starts in about 90 minutes, I believe. Okay. Uh, mentioned it earlier. The weather looks like it's going to be a big factor. Starting around 2 a.m. in Augusta, they are forecasting... Winds of up to 50 miles an hour and about an inch and a half of rain throughout the day tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow's going to be the worst day by yeah. far. And then <laughs> hopefully after that, it will uh, it will lighten up a little bit. But my guess is they will not be able to complete the entire first round. I mean, they'll be lucky if they even get, like the guys who are supposed to tee off at 8 a.m. East Coast time, 5 a.m. our time, They'll be lucky if they kind of get off like midday, late in the day. The people with the afternoon tea times probably They're don't even get, get started at all on Thursday. They don't play get their, drunk tonight. They don't play their first round until Friday, and then they'll have to go right back out for their second round. So that that'll impact like Tiger Woods. That's terrible for him. Yeah, thirty six holes if in he, a day. If he's going to have to play thirty six holes on Friday just to get in, I don't know that he can do that. He might he might have to withdraw from the tournament if the weather stays like that and he can't split up his rounds so that's a big factor for for him in just terms of the health uh most people for good reason have scotty scheffler as the favorite he has uh, two firsts and a second place finish in his last three starts augusta is a ball strikers course and there is nobody nobody in the world who hits the ball better than scotty scheffler it's just the flat stick the putter that holds him back when he putts well he wins but he has been putting Better. Much, much better. Much better this season, and especially the last uh, couple of starts. So he's the logical pick, obviously. What is always intriguing, though, is this is the first time in many, many months now since the uh, since the last year's British that you got the live golfers and the PGA Tour guys all together. So it's been like nine months since these guys have played in a tournament at the same time. And even I don't follow live golf very closely. I don't. I know Sergio like finished second last week. It's... What is his form good? Is John Rahm's form good? Is Brooks Kepka playing well? I don't know. I watch at least enough PGA Tour golf to have an idea of guys who are playing well. Like I like Hideki Matsuyama this week because he's been playing much better than he has the last couple of years. And obviously, track record at Augusta is important. Um, you know, for for a guy who's won a green jacket before, you get some course knowledge around that place. I think that's really big. Uh, last week's winner, Akshay Batia. I love lefties at Augusta. You know, Phil's one there. Uh, Mike Weir. You've got lefties seem to have a good advantage there. But for Batia, you know, most guys who know they're going to play in the Masters get to go a few times over the course of the year, play some practice rounds, learn the ins and outs. He didn't qualify until last week, so he's probably stepping on the property for the first time on Monday. Panic. That's a lot to ask (laughs) uh, for a guy who's even playing some really good golf right now. So don't think that he's going to be a factor. Uh, just always an interesting tournament. Always tell, a beautiful scene. I'll tell my master story that my dad Please. T- that my dad told me. I've told you guys this before. I think I've told it on the air before too. But he was um, friendly with Frank Broyles, who was the athletic director at University of Arkansas. And Broyles told him a story. He's a member at Augusta, so membership obviously is. Very limited. You would think, hey, I'm a billionaire. Like, if I am I am a billionaire, they'll take me right away. No. no. Let, let's just say there's no website to apply. Correct. There's, there's no, no phone number to call. You Someone will tap you on the shoulder and, and say you are now a member or you are cordially invited to come out and apply for membership. Otherwise, don't even ask. I'm there's- sure it's a huge, huge thing. And there was this kind of young upstart doctor uh, young guy in Augusta, and he was very well liked and and lo- you know loved uh, in the community. And they thought, what a great member he will be. <laughs> so they they invite this guy to join, and he joins, of course. And and he goes out there, and he is in awe. He's at he's at Augusta. He belongs to Augusta. And he's out there playing and putting, Ben, and chipping, and he's playing a few times a week. And and uh, after a while, after a couple months of this, the members had to come over. <clears throat> And say, hey, bud, settle down. He's like, what, what are you talking about? They're like, you're, you're, you're here too much. You're playing too much. Uh, you need to, you need to ease off the gas. And he's like, I, I'm a member here. Finally, I, like, yeah, you're always on the putting yeah. green. You're always on the driving range. You're always playing. So don't. 
And he's like, what? don't take this the wrong way. It's not Loma Santa Fe Country Club. <laughs> you can't just show up every day and play because you're a member. And he's like, well, well, I'm a member. <laughs> I like that is the weirdest. <clears throat> That's the weirdest part of Augusta for me. Like, because you know, it, it's not inexpensive. And you know that it's very prestigious, but you're like, so you're telling me I'm a member of this club, but I can't come. Yeah, you can come. You just got to space it out a little bit more, which I totally, it's like, if you have a Ferrari, you want to drive it. I would imagine me, like there are people that will buy a Ferrari and park it in the garage. If I have a Ferrari, I'm driving it. We're taking it to spring training. Like we're not, I'm not, I don't want to put the miles on it. No, like (laughs) I'm driving this thing into the ground, man. That was one of those things. Yeah, I think most of their members, I mean. I, I mean, probably none of them actually live in Augusta, right. Georgia. Some Augusta, Georgia is not really a great place to live from what I've heard. So they'll come in and they have the cottages where you come and stay. And you stay for like two nights and you play yeah. two or three rounds. And then you leave and maybe you come back again in a month or two and play again. But you don't just sit, sit there for three weeks and come every day and play. <laughs> That's just practice. Not, it's uncouth. I think it's so good. It's uncouth. So you go to Costco. The guy's like, you're here again? No. <laughs> sorry, buddy. Yeah. Take it. <laughs> Take it but back. I'm a member. I've got a Costco I, I, card. I just, I You're here to, too often. Yeah, buddy, you were here yesterday. You don't need to be here yeah. every day, okay, getting these incredible deals. Uh, Elisa <laughs> asked, what about the the players whose wives are pregnant? Scotty Scheffler's wife is very close to being due, and he has said, Sam Burns' his wife as well, and that if they go into labor, they're out of there. They're on, So that's a... If you're like making picks, that is a legitimate concern that Scotty could be in the lead on Saturday morning, and he gets a... A call he on his cell not phone, and he's gone. The Masters. He's there is gone. no way. Just like Phil Mickelson said, he would be gone if the U.S. Open had gone to the playoff uh, that year. That uh, yeah, that was the year that he lost. To, was it Payne Stewart? I think, and he had their first child was going to be born. And if he didn't, uh, if he didn't win on Saturday, they were having the Bay or Sunday. They were having the Bay on Monday. He was going to like, I can't do a playoff, so I got to win it today. My but, wife would not let me come home. She would make me stay at the Masters. If, especially if I was in the lead. Would, would you? What do you think? If my wife was in the lead at the Masters no, and I was going to have a baby, you were, I would make sure she stayed at the Masters. If you were in the lead at the Masters. I don't know. I'm not I'm not her. I can't tell you what she would say. Yeah, but you've been married to her for 22 years. you have an idea of what her... I think she'd want me to come be there, <laughs> be there for the baby. So too. Polly, <laughs> Mrs. Reindel... Yeah, she'd want me there. Yeah. <clears throat> Hannah would not. <laughs> she straight up. She told me she doesn't like when pitchers or players go on paternity leave she, during the season. She doesn't believe it. All right, Manny, you're on, you're on blast <laughs> Manny, already I'm from sorry. Hannah. Like, I'm, lead, I I'm, so, I'm sorry. I wonder she, if it changes, she, like, are firstborn or is it second or third? I think it absolutely matters. I think it absolutely matters. I, to me, third I, child, you're in the lead at the Masters. And again, set up a. What like set a, a zoom or no, something? No. Oh. Set up a zoom so you can <laughs> like, like a little clinic. Be there in the in the delivery <laughs> hey, room. How's it going? That's messy. Scott, wow. You know, and I get Scotty Scheffler's won a Masters, but this is what you work your whole life for, and you get only maybe a couple of opportunities where you're actually in contention. But how many kids do you? But you're gonna be there for your kid for years and years and years. You don't actually, <laughs> you don't actually have anything to do when you're the dad. On the delivery. You're yeah. mostly just in the way. I told you. Well, I you took, don't have anything to do. I took two weeks off for paternity. She made me cut it off yeah. after a week. <laughs> so she just was not. She just is not. She doesn't believe in paternity leave. She made you cut it off or you were ready uh, to get back? I was ready to get back. But she was like, you go, please. Get like, out of here. Get out of here. I don't need you here. You don't have, well, functioning breasts. So. I wonder if Luis Camposano has ever been to the Masters. Yeah, I wonder. He's from, from Augusta, yeah. Georgia. Yeah. Native. Awesome. All right, we got to go break. All right. Uh, when we come back, uh, riveting, we, we got first, we got some tickets to give away. San Diego Legion again, Sunday, Snapdragon Stadium. Hey, if you made taking it on Ben's Masters talk. You get some tickets now to the uh, <laughs> Snapdragon Stadium NOLA Gold Legion rugby match on Sunday. Uh, tickets are available at sdlegion.com, but you can win a pair right now, 833-288-0973. Third caller wins the pair of Legion tickets, 833-288-0973. Final segment will feature our friend Jen Sturger, comedian, going to be in town. Haven't caught up with Hello. her in a few months. She's not in studio. So. Oh, bummer. But she is going to give us a call when we come back next with Ben Woods on 97.3 The Fam.
Just saw her, our next guest tweet here. San Diego, one night only. I love that. One night only. Create some urgency. Yeah, sense like, of urgency. You miss it, you're out of luck. Uh, our friend uh, Jen Sturger is going to be performing at uh, Mike Drop Comedy, Claremont Mesa, coming up on Friday. Friday night? Friday night, April 12th. And uh, you can get your tickets now at MikeDropComedy.com. But joining us is... Jen Sturger, back here on Ben and Woods on 97.3 The Fan. Jen, good morning. It's good to hear from you guys again. Is anyone dressed like Pikachu this time? No, not this. For holidays? It's not Comic Con. It's not Comic Con. <laughs> if you guys missed that story, our creepy boss, boss is not. Creepy here. boss hasn't lurked around. I'm surprised. Just he's probably listening intently at his, his radio. But we were <laughs> we were set to meet up with Jen, and she got kind of uh, she was shopping, and and we, we, we missed each other. We were doing videos down yeah. Comic Con, running around. And the next thing you know, we're like, oh, I guess we'll we'll catch her next time. And we're walking away from the hotel. And Adam sees a, girl, a woman uh, leaning, leaning over, getting things out of the trunk from behind, and says, "Oh, I think that's her." And like, I said, "We're we're it's sixty really yards away." To find Six, out he subscribes to my website. Yeah, sixty <laughs> yards away, he spots you from your rear end, like a hawk. Jen. Oh, there she is. What? <laughs> it's one of my. It's literally oh. one of my favorite. I've just got to do a lot of cool stuff at radio. That moment right there, he goes. Oh, there she is. From behind. No one had seen your it face. Like, hey, isn't that <laughs> Jen isn't that Sturger? Her? Like, it's my favorite. That's a butt in yoga pants. Well, I don't know, it could be anybody. And it's a good... <laughs> Which it, is honestly, it's honestly the exact opposite way I've gotten, just, I got discovered. So I'm like, I'll take it. You know, if I'm not recognizable from the back, like, I'll take it. It means, it means I'm fighting the good fight against gravity at this point. That's you know? right. Well, it's a good segue into, and I know you've been talking about, you know, your your new life as a single woman uh, lately and on some podcasts and things like that i gotta ask you like how's that been the dating scene and and whatnot oh it's an absolute hellscape are you kidding me <laughs> it's an absolute hellscape but honestly i i think this time has been so good for me because um i think there's so much stigma around getting divorced because you feel like a failure but in reality it's like if you end up leaving the person that you're with and finding a better version of yourself like it was worth it you know sure. and i think this is the strongest I've ever felt on stage. I feel so connected and I feel like I'm so honest. And I, I don't know if you guys saw it, but I'm also doing the big Netflix is a joke festival up here in Los Angeles in May. Like that's huge, you know? So I, I feel like comedy is showing me that I made the right decision. For sure. And it, it just, I just, sorry, I just wanted to ask you like your DMS, are they insane? Is it just, <laughs> do you even look, do you even look anymore? Um, you know, I have certain words and blocked out, but every once in a yeah. while, you know, um, a noodle slips to the pasta strainer. So. Oh no, <laughs> never works. I, by the so way. I have a real, I have a real question. And, and obviously okay. I know that, you know, what you guys are referring to, that there are plenty of creeps out there, but you know, from my perspective, and it's been a long time since I've been on the, the dating scene, but for a guy, my fear was always rejection. Do you ever have to worry about that, like, oh, is this person actually going to be interested in me, or is is that not an issue? And I, this is a completely. I, I just really want to know what it's like walking in your shoes a little bit. Oh no, I still get rejected. You know what I'm finding out is people don't know how old I am, and so younger guys will start talking to me, and then they quickly realize I could have babysat them at one point in their lifetime, <laughs> and the conversation quickly pivots to, all right, well, I got to go now. So, yeah, that's. That's actually happened a couple of times, and I'm like, wow, I live in Los Angeles, for sure. Yeah, it's very L.A., for sure. Uh, talking to our pal Jen Sturger. So it sounds like everything is going really well. As far as, like, material, it does give you the great, I think, the greatest comedians in my lifetime. I've always drawn on their pain for, um, for laughs. It's the only way to get through life. I, I laugh a lot. You know, I try to because it, it, if you doom scroll, if you start worrying about this, that, and the other, you really can get bogged down having an outlet like that and a microphone. I, I'm so glad that I have one. And for you, too, to get up on stage and say, yes, let's all mock my pain and, and laugh <laughs> at it together. There's something really cathartic and vulnerable, vulnerable about that. Yeah, it's so funny, though. You mentioned doom scrolling, and I was like, I don't know. One of the ways I used to keep up with what you guys were doing is Twitter, and I can't get on there anymore because, like, the new algorithm or the way that the website works, like, I feel like it's just all porn bots. Yeah, definitely. You know? definitely. <laughs> so I'll be like, what is Betty Woods up to? Oh, no, don't want to see that. You yeah, know? blank like, in bio. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
fucked up, man. But you, it gives you, it gives you plenty, uh, plenty of material and I guess inspiration uh, to pull from. Absolutely, you know, and I think the more honest you are on stage, the more the audience can vibe with you. You know, I've been touring a lot. I've, um, I'm actually touring. I'm actually down in San Diego tonight, but that show is sold out with uh, my friend Anna Akana. So uh, Friday is going to be like the first time in a while that I've run like I've, I've headlined. So I'm doing like a longer set. Um, so I'm going to be trying a bunch of new stuff and obviously talking about my divorce and talking about just life in general. Still trying to figure out how to talk about the whole you know, that thing. Yeah. You can Google it, guys, if you have no idea what I'm talking about. The um, thing. Still trying to figure out how that works. Um, but I think one way or another, you know, hopefully I end up on Netflix. Um, just I, I hope it's not a true crime documentary, you know? Yeah, no, I, I feel you there. And I, I, it's funny, when a comedian says, I'm going to be trying some new stuff, that makes me excited. When a band says, I'm going to be, we're going to be playing <laughs> some new songs, I'm not happy about it at all. Uh, but, Listen here, Billy Joel. We he, haven't cared about anything you've done since the bro, early 90s. My, it's funny you bring that up. My wife is going to Sting and Billy Joel this weekend on right? Saturday. Yeah. And I said, that's the oh. whitest thing you've right. ever done. And you own a Tesla <laughs> and you have a One Love tattoo. You're going to go to, you're going to Billy Joel and Sting on right. Saturday. I have to admit, I just Googled the thing and I just got a 1982 film about a research team in Antarctica. You know what punched she's by talking about. That's alien. You know what she's talking what we about. Talking I didn't about, really know what thing. <laughs> The guy in the chat just told me I look like Billy Joel, so I'm gonna I'm gonna take off for the day. I mean, if you shaved your head completely, I could maybe see it. I hate it. It's but so funny hair. whenever I see pictures of Billy Joel with his kids, I'm like, that man's jeans are strong. Like yeah. he was with so many models, and all of his kids look like him. I know, like, I know. Seriously. And their daughters. <laughs> Talk about a bummer. <laughs> What's uh what's life on the road like? Yeah. I mean, how do you manage that sort of schedule in terms of different cities, different shows every week? Bro, so many naps. There's just so many naps. People are like, Oh, did you do anything cool today? I'm like, yeah, I got a good solid two hour nap in the middle of the afternoon. Comedy's... That's the only way I survive. It's just living in a bunch of strip malls and um just a lot of just a lot of like honestly running errands and then doing shows. Like it's it's not as exciting as people think it is. Because I just have to restore like i have to save my energy you know yeah. um i don't know if you guys saw that did you see i got diagnosed with adhd as an adult no but i could have assumed it i, I assume oh, mostly i assume mostly everybody well like we're tr we're gonna meet you down at comic con and you're like i may be there i may not be there i might be shopping i needed a new bra and you had to go to la jolla to get a new bra like i just assume oh yeah she's adhd like me She's like, you guys know you can get a bra like anywhere, right? Right. He went to La Jolla. <laughs> yeah, he went to all the way to La Jolla to get a, a bra, by the way. I'm, I'm brand loyal, okay? I get you. <laughs> I'm the opposite, and it's a problem as well. I can't focus on more than one thing at a time. No. And I get so locked in that you cannot distract me from whatever I'm looking at no. or, you know. Like Focus concentrating dog. on, yeah, it's it's oh, actually you're a problem. Another dog way. when he sees other dogs on a walk, it's kind of like, like Adam and her Kevin. Adam and her her derriere. What's the opposite of Adderall? I need that heroin, <laughs> <laughs> barbiturates, Ritalin. Yeah, no, no. no. Hey, at least there's not a shortage of that right now. That's I true. love that they prescribe me something that they're like, you might be able to get it in six months. Yeah, for sure. Well, we wish you the best. We know you're going to crush it, and make sure everybody goes out. Give the, the tickets info are available. Here. Mic drop comedy Friday night. Uh, Mic drop comedy dot com. It's in Claremont, Mesa. You can see Jen Sturger performing on stage while she's in town here in San Diego. Jen, always best of luck to you, and thank you for joining us. Thanks so much. Hopefully, Paul shows up this time. He's been ghosting me. Oh, oh Paulie, <laughs> playing the. I was going to surprise you. I just bought two tickets like 20 minutes ago. Big league. Yeah. Imagine All big right, well, leaguing her. Do a meet I, and greet too. We <laughs> had like I was in the hospital, I think, for one of them, and we so. had a dog in Good the emergency dog, vet. Dog stuff. That's, That's true. Fair. That's, That's true. Fair. We'll see you Friday. All right. Though. Well, it's so good to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for having me. You too. Keep up the great work. The great Jen Sturger on the program again. She's awesome, man. I love her. And that story with Adam remains just one of the... It's one it's of the pretty, best. I mean, I, sometimes you, you like to embellish your stories. I, That's pretty much how it happened. It's not... I, I don't embellish. I have a lot of energy when I talk right. about them, but that was dead on. He just casually glanced and goes, oh, I think that's her right there. That's Jen. That's Jen. 
How do you know? She's not even turned around yet. And she I mean, Adam might say, well, there's a woman getting out. She was supposed to be here around this time. There's a woman over there getting out of her car. There was uh, It was Comic-Con. There but were people everywhere. You could not everywhere. tell. Yeah. There was no way you could tell and it was And we her. had already, I had texted her. She's like, oh, there's, it's not going to happen today. Happen. It's all good. And she was, I just looked up the picture. She's wearing like a tank top cut yeah. off and, and black yoga pants. Like every other every person other woman. walking around out there. And Adam just goes, God, oh, yeah, great, I'd recognize dude. that. But anyway, uh, yeah. That was so good. All right, last couple of minutes, we're going to check traffic. We'll uh, preview today's homestand and series finale against the Cubs briefly next year on 97.3 The Fan. From the 97.3 The Fan Traffic Center, here's Kelly Davick. Well, let's start with the good news first. Lanes have been reopened southbound 5 at Palomar Street in the South Bay. Things were shut down all morning, all due to investigation of an early morning fatal collision. So speeds are getting back to normal in both directions. Again, lanes open southbound 5 at Palomar Street. Watch out for some cinder blocks on the Imperial Avenue on-ramp to northbound 805. Also, collision at clearing stage on southbound 163 right at the West 8 connector. I'm Kelly Danik with Ben and Woods, San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. All right, which Kyle Hendricks shows up for the Cubs this afternoon? Come on. Got uh, 240 Eco Water SoCal pregame show with Sam Levitt, 340 first pitch. Is it Kyle Hendricks, who has uh, fairly owned the Padres over his career? He has. With a two something ERA. Two seven. Many, many starts, and just always seems to keep the Padres off balance no matter who's in the lineup. Or. Is it Kyle Hendricks, who has been absolutely massacred in his first couple of starts this year <laughs> and looks like he may be washed? If the Padres get that Kyle Hendricks, they got a good chance to win the series with Dylan Cease on the mound today. And if they win the series and start their week, you know, two and one, go to LA in a much better position to have a solid week here. They lose, and, you know, they're in danger of what I said on Monday. A one in five week oh. puts you in a. Put you in a hole that you're going to be digging out of for a while. So this is a very important game for the San Diego Padres this afternoon. And you've got your high leverage guys ready today. If Dylan Cease falters, Ben, you've got you you you've got Suarez who's ready at the back end if you can get a lead, and he's shown the ability. You got an off day tomorrow, so Mike Schill's not going to have any problem using him for more than three. Just outs. need some offense. Though. Just need some offense. Uh, De Los Santos is fresh. Wandy Peralta is fresh. Uh, Yuki Matsui hasn't pitched in a couple days. He's fresh, so. This this is the one you, you, you got to get. Let's win a series today. Cubs um, are a little less fresh. I mean, they had Al- Azulay in both games. Yep. They've used some relievers. So, yeah, I mean, baseball is baseball, and anything can happen. But this is this is one where you should have a, the advantage and want to take advantage of the advantage. I mean, if Jan Gomes isn't in the lineup today, day game after a night game, I mean, Craig Council might might put him back in the on the bench again. Do they do they have an off day tomorrow too? Now, there's no reason why Jan Gomes should own Dylan Cease just because he's wearing a Padres uniform. You say that. I know. You say that. I know. It doesn't make any sense though. There's no logic behind it. Why you'd have good success against one team. Now, I know guys maybe hit well in certain parks. They like the backdrop, whatever. But in terms of like facing a pitcher who's never been on a team before, that shouldn't carry over for a guy like Jan Gomes. Yeah, one would think. So, yeah, 340 game today. And then uh, I assume the Padres will go home and drive up to L.A. tomorrow for a three-game series against the Dodgers and, you know, get some of those games out of the way. Giants-Dodgers games early, and then, uh, you know, you'll face them again later this season. But uh, you just want to kind of tread water, as we said, against the Dodgers this year. They've, they're one and one so far. You know, get get one, maybe two this weekend would be fantastic. Must yeah, win great game today, week. Ben. Must win. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not, but feels like it. it. It's one that if you if you lose, you're oh. going to be feeling in a really bad place, and if you win, you're feeling in a really good place. Not every game is like that over the baseball season. They, you know, they're all important, equally important, but there are certain mile post games where going into an off day. Yeah, you're going to feel way better if you win, and if you're going to feel way worse if you lose this one. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Annie and Elston are coming up next. They'll take you for the next four hours. Great job by our executive producer and imaging director, Paul Rindle. For Stephen Woods, I'm Ben Higgins. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. From all of us here at San Diego's number one sports station, 97.3 The Fan. So long, everybody.